Welcome to week three of the PartyCasino.com Snooker Premier League. We're live from the Guildhall in Preston. Three top class matches for you tonight. This is how they shape up. First up, defending champion Sean Murphy takes on Marco Fu. A second match sees the UK champion Ding Junhui up against the current China Open champion Mark Williams. And our third match promises to be an absolute corker. World number one and world champion Neil Robertson up against Masters champion Mark Selby. Hello, good to see you again. Yeah, it really is a great lineup we got tonight. As you've just seen, six of the seven Premier League players all in action tonight, including for the first time this season, newly crowned world champion and world number one, Neil Robertson. Uh, talking to Nils, I'm joined right at the top of the show today by our former world number three, Neil Folds. Um, we'll talk about how strong the lineup is in a minute, Neil, but firstly, great to see for the first time this season in the Premier League, the current world champion and also provisionally world number one, Neil Robertson. Yeah, he's the world number one. It's not provisional, it's f official now. And, and who could deny him it? I mean, his progress has been meteoric over the years. And it's a great story how he had 500 quid when he came over 10 years ago. I don't think he had a dress suit, he had a queue and now he's world champion, so it's a fantastic story. Mm. We always talk, whenever we do the Premier League, about how strong the field is. Um, I think this year, personally, I'll get your opinion on it, I think this is the strongest year we've ever had in the Premier League, because every single player won a tournament last year. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a league of champions this year, I think for the first time ever. I'll tell you why it's strong, because Ronnie didn't even win it last year. Now, this has been Ronnie's little pension fund every year, hasn't it? But last year, it wasn't to be. So it is very strong. And, you know, even the likes of O'Sullivan have got to work to qualify. He's not even uh, looking that strong after two matches yet. So it's a lot to play for. Mm. If you're sat home thinking, oh, I'd love to go and see the Premier League. Well, listen, it's only week three tonight. You've got plenty of time to catch up with us. Uh, the next time the, uh, the Premier League Roadshow is in town is in Brentwood, uh, in Essex, then Inverness, and then you can see Penrith as well in there, and the Hutton Moor Leisure Centre, Grimsby. Then we're off to Wales. Uh, I'm only joking, Clan Dud, no, we're off to. And then the finals weekend, uh, Hopton on Sea yet again. And Neil, dare I ask you, I know we're so far away from the finals weekend. The top four go through to that semi finals, then final stages. Dare I ask, can you pick the top four at this stage who you think? will be there? No, I'll tell you why you can't, because last year Sean Murphy won it and he didn't look like qualifying, it was down to the final qualifying night and he scraped in in fourth and then you start again and it shows you that even though he hadn't played well he went on to win, it's very very open and like I say O'Sullivan hasn't started well so this year it's all up for grabs still. Okay, it is indeed, uh, as I say we've got three matches for the price of two tonight, we're going to meet the boys for our first match in just a sec but in case you missed it, this is what happened two weeks ago in the Premier League. Premier League match night number two, Selby versus Williams. Played it perfectly, well played. He's a top class player. This has been an excellent break, it really has. Selby on the mark, Williams a marked man. Boy is he in form, great pot. Goodness me, he's doing well. What a start by Mark Selby. This is more like it, but you can't get better snooping than we've seen so far. What a response, having been effectively frozen out. This is Williams' chance to draw level. And he's played it, and played it beautifully. And Williams, back on level terms. Great performance, this. He's looking great, isn't it? Another frame looks like going to Mark Williams. Well, this is the Premier League all over. Speed and quality combined. Concession arrives. Williams wins by four frames to two. Well, if they both play their best, it's going to be something to behold. Well played. That's perfect. It's a clever shot, that. That was a cracking black. This qualifies as a very good start. Ding signals his intent. O'Sullivan trails. Wow. He seems a stroke now. A flavour there of O'Sullivan's excellence. He was 1 0 down, he's now 2 1 ahead. Excellent pot, well played. He's one of the great side cushion potters I've ever seen. Should win the frame now from here. Ding is back on level terms. An important frame for both of them. That was a real shock. Oh, can you believe it? I've never seen Ronnie miss shots like this, ever. And it could, and maybe should, cost him the frame. 
Ding salvages a point. Quality stone here in Plymouth Pavilions. Uh, so all that means is how the current Premier League looks. Ronnie O'Sullivan, the Rocket, although he's top of the league, yet to win a game. Uh, Sean Murphy, defending champion, has won his game and he got two centuries as well, £7,000. Mark Williams, he's found an amazing uh, reign of form, if you like, and Ding Junhui up there as well. Uh, Marco, Mark Selby, and look at that, the world champion and world number one, Neil Robertson, the bottom of the Premier League. Uh, but obviously he's not played a game yet. Uh, Marco Fu against Sean Murphy is our first game, Neil. How do you see that one going? I think Marco never ceases to amaze me because he didn't play well in the league last year. Won the Championship League, played brilliantly to do so. And if you go back to the first week of this year's league, he had Ronnie O'Sullivan beaten and Ronnie had to pull out a great century. So I think that he's always going to be tough to beat. However, I think Sean Murphy, uh, he loves this, this mm. format. He won last year and he started better with his first win. So uh, that is a tight one. It, it might be Murphy, but it, it could also be a draw, that one. OK, Ding Junhui against Mark Williams. A tough one to predict because on their day, both players capable of destroying the other one. They had a great match in the World Open in Glasgow the other day where Ding led 2-0 and uh, it was the first time throughout the, the competition that anyone had come from behind. Williams reeled off three frames and beat him. Of course, he suffered the same fate against him in the semi-final. But uh, I, I think that on current form, Mark Williams is playing as well as just about anybody, maybe with the exception of Robertson. Do you expect safety to be difficult in the second match? Because both of them are famous for their long pots. I've got the feeling if there is going to be a long pot of the night, it's going to be match number two. Yeah, I think they both can play safe. I think Mark's a little bit better than he would have you believe. But it's going to be all-out attack, I should think. That's their strength, isn't it? Mm. Uh, and third up, a mouth-watering tie. World champion, world number one, world open champion as well, Neil Robertson, against Masters champion Mark Selby. Difficult one to predict as well. The problem with, with Neil is that he's never played well in the league. He's been in it twice. He's hardly won a match. So he's been disappointing, but I don't know. I think he's got so much confidence from his world crown that you'd fancy him. His opponent is probably unlucky not to have been in the league last year. He was in the final two years ago. I think Mark Selby's probably in the top four or five players in the world. OK, that's what Neil thinks. Let's have a, a quick look what the book is make of it. Very, very tricky for them tonight. Sean Murphy against Marco Fu. Well, Sean's favourite there, 11 and 10, nearly two, or just over 2 to 1, I should say, for Marco Fu, 9 to 4. Then the next two matches, the bookies can't separate them. Ding Junhui against Mark, both players 8 to 5. And Neil Robertson, world champion, against Mark Selby, also 8 to 5. Does that surprise you, world champion, world number one, world open champion? Obviously the man in form, 8 to 5. The bookies can't separate him and Mark. Strange thing is, he was in the league last year on the basis of all the ranking tournaments he won, and he didn't play well. But as I say, I think that uh, this could be his year in the league. He has uh, not done very well, but this, he's just he's ten foot tall at the moment, isn't he? So it is probably a good bet. He's indeed right. I'll let you get back to the commentary box. Time for our first game and to meet the players. And first up, it's Marco Fu. I thought I was going to have to run up there and get you myself, Marco. Uh, it's good to see you. Um, let me ask you this. You've not played in the Premier League for a month. Um, does that make a difference to snooker players? Do you need to be playing week in, week out, or is it irrelevant? Um, of course, it's uh, like really important for us to play in like, tournaments in, in, like, on a regular basis, uh, which we're doing because we have so many tournaments around the world with the PTC, PTCs, and so many ranking tournaments. So, yes, yeah, it should be um, like we, we're all pretty match sharp, I think, mm. all of us. Uh, in your opening game against the Rocket Ronnie O'Sullivan, good draw. You were 3 2 up, so you had a chance to get maximum points. When you look back at a game like that, um, are you happy with the point? I mean, Ronnie O'Sullivan, obviously one of the most difficult players to beat in the Premier League. Happy with the draw? Um, well, um, not, not bad, because um, like, like you, you take a draw against Ronnie, but when I look back, it was kind of a little bit disappointing because I was 3 3 2 up, as you mm. said. But, but Ronnie played really well in the last frame, so I couldn't really do anything about it. So, yeah, I, I, I was like, quite happy with the point. 
Uh, if you win tonight, you um, equal your total points tally for the entire Premier League last season. And obviously, you only played two games. What do you think the difference is? You've obviously got uh, you're obviously playing well this season in the Premier League, and not necessarily in, in the Premier League, but in the, the snooker calendar. Last season, perhaps not as well. Is there a difference? Do you understand why? Um, just feeling a little bit more comfortable, enjoy enjoying the game a little bit more than last year, and yeah, I think just sometimes just doesn't really makes that much of a difference like good and bad there's very slight difference mm. in between them so sometimes it just takes one or two matches to like sp like turn the whole thing around and um I, I won the championship league last year which helped me a lot with confidence so mm. yeah i'm really looking forward to all the all the matches this season and we were chatting myself and Neil folds at the top of the show about how difficult the premier league is this season no easy games at all sean, sean murphy another tricky game for you tonight yeah very tough because he, he won it last year so obviously he knows what it takes to to win a tournament especially in the premier league it's a different format 25 second shot clock and mm. sean seems to be yeah getting really used to the format so it's going to be a tough match tonight okay it's going to be a good one. Marco Fu, thanks very much. Cheers. <laughs> uh, Marco's opponent is Sean Murphy. It's nice to see you defending champ. Your second game as defending champ in the Premier League. Your first one against Ding Junhui. Maybe slightly easier than you would have predicted. 5-1 winner. Um, two century breaks. £7,000 for the night's work. Not bad. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> when you look back at a game like that and you, you win 5-1, does it surprise you? I, you know, obviously I understand how good you guys are and these results are possible. But Ding, one of the best players on the circuit, surely you weren't even expecting that sort of result. No, not really. And, you know, I would have been happy with a draw, to be honest. Get the season off to a, you know, a decent start. And someone like Ding, you know, he's a, he's a class act. Mm. But I think, you know, as, as it said at the top of the show, this tournament's got some very, very good players in it. And um, I echo what Marco just said about... The difference between a good season and a bad season can be a result here, a result there. So, you know, it's hard to say. How do you see tonight's game going? I'm guessing that Marco won't make as many mistakes as an out-of-form ding made when you last played him. Well, I, I don't know. Do you know something I don't? <laughs> um, no, I, I think tonight will be a good game. I think we're, we're both pretty sharp. We've, we've both played a lot of tournaments over the last few weeks and months. Um, you know, snooker for me at the minute is enjoying its best period ever with as many tournaments as we've mm. got travelling around the, the world playing nearly every weekend so you know we're both we're both sharp and I think the standards only going to get better I'm always curious um, as to you guys what's going on in your head when you're playing matches or watching matches I know you watch a lot of Premier League snooker in other sports in tennis in football you can watch your opponents and you can learn maybe their weakness does that happen in snooker can you watch someone that you'll be playing soon and think I'll play more safety in that or I'll do this I'll do that I think I think so in as much as like with younger players who are just coming on to tour you know you kind of think well I'll just uh do what they did to me when I first came on tour and time it up behind the colours at the, at the bottom end but you know the, the, the standards increasing so much across the board that um, you, you can't really watch a player and just judge him how he's going to play on any given day everybody can make centuries and everyone can win at one visit so it's you know it's tough always a pleasure best of luck Sean Murphy everyone thanks Sean <laughs> the first of three will join our boys in the box Mike Hallett and first up the brilliant Clive Everton Week three of uh, Snooker's uh, Premier League and uh, a triple header. Sean Murphy comes in on played one, won one. Marco Fu on played Sean one, Murphy's drawn one. These two players met in the final of the 2008 UK Championship. It went right to the wire before Murphy won 10-9.
Hofu currently 16th in the world rankings. Sean Murphy 8th. Marco Fu has just kept his place in the top 16. The rankings are now, incidentally, on a rolling basis instead of changing just once a year. And uh, what's helped him to do that is reaching a couple of semi-finals in two of the minor ranking events that we've had so far in this campaign. The bleep, the bleep uh, gave him the five-second warning because, of course, uh, we're operating under shot clock conditions a limit of 25 seconds per shot One. first blood to the Englishman then yeah perhaps just the bleeps or the pitch and say whatever it is then just put um, Marco off a little bit there his concentration might have gone on that red which has allowed Sean in Three. This is an interesting match to call, but the way Sean played in the opening match against Stings and Wayne was superb. And I'm sure oh. that he might be looking for a similar result this evening. It would certainly suit him absolutely fine. <coughs> he beat Ding 5-1. But curiously enough, overall, he hasn't started the season all that well. No. Ten. His best finish is uh, a semi-final in the Paul Hunter Classic in Firth, Germany, which uh, this season had minor ranking tournament status. Although during the summer, he beat Ding Junhui 9-8 in Seven. Ding's hometown, Wuxi City. 9-8 from six down with seven to play. 18. Well, already with the reds and the way they are, this is becoming a frame winning opportunity. 25. went into that little cluster quite softly 33. there was a slight risk of finishing up against a red but he's okay for this 34 albeit with elevated bridging yeah I think he's still got one to the right corner there will stun off top and side cushions he might go into them yeah the left on red will go Forty-one. Still one loose red before he has to uh, go into them again. Forty-two. Well, he could play a little cannon into them here or play off the side cushion for that open red. Elected to play on the red to the middle. Forty-nine. Well, Marco Fu elected to take on that difficult red to the left corner. <laughs> but um, on this occasion, Sean's run out of position. He's on the wrong side of the blue. And I don't think there's anything that goes there. So unless he takes on another colour, possibly the brown, that could be end of break. Just electing to take the extra five points. Yes, I can't see anything there. I think this will just be a safety, but as always, just got to be careful you don't push anything towards a corner pocket. 
Sean Murphy, 55. 55 from his first chance. Not bad, but bearing in mind the standard of the top players, there'll be a tinge of disappointment uh, within him at not winning the frame at that very visit. Yes, but it's a superb safety shot as well, and he's really got Marco in trouble here. He could probably just sneak off that one and try and get the... Well, he's just asked for a timeout. Understandably, <laughs> the way the balls are. And I think he can see the one on the right-hand side. Each player is allowed five timeouts in all, no more than three in any one frame. Well, he's looking at the one just beyond the blue, on the line of the blue, I should say. Well, that's a great shot. That really is a great shot. He misses the green. He's done well there. Could have done the white, just get himself tight to that back cushion, but he'll be happy with it. I'm just wondering whether Sean's taking this on. I think he's in the mood. Well, he did, but it was a mile away. Oh, this is not easy. Well played. It's giving him a chance to get back into this opening frame. Excellent pop. One. It's just gone a little bit near that side cushion. This downward striking, as you can see, this could be missed trying to hold for the black. Well done. Seven. Fourteen. This is a great chance to steal this first frame for Marco. I mean, obviously, Sean Murphy took all the initiative early on, that 55, but there's not really a difficult ball on the table here. Just done up past the pink. And of course, in taking this one, it opens up the one near the pink. <coughs> okay, the one near the corner pocket is tight to the cushion, but that's not really a problem. Twenty-three. And that was an excellent red into the middle, Clive, to get in. It really was a difficult pot and it made it look easy. Yes, and it was a frame loser if he missed. Twenty-nine. The red on the cushion shouldn't be a problem because it's uh, pretty near the corner pocket but uh, you do have to get fairly straight behind it but not dead straight. Yeah well that's perfect you can drop this in for the black and of course the red down the table waiting. 36. And I'm sure that um, well Sean Murphy well he kicked off for that 55 and must have thought well oh, very strong for the opening frame but perhaps not now. 37. Murphy made a 55 break, played a great safety at the end of it, but Fu was able to respond, came out on top in that little tactical duel, and now he's favourite to take the frame. Forty-four. Yeah, it's only eleven behind now, with thirty-five on. 
but this is a, a good response from Marco here. Perfect. 45. Forty-nine. Well, he's 51. got them all there now, and he's done this tens of thousands of times in the club. Fifty-four. Yes, any professional would uh, back himself in any circumstances to clear the colours from their spots. And he only needs up to an include in the pink. Well, what a cracking out in frame. If this is signs of things to come, we're in for a great evening. 63. Sean Murphy was first in with 55. But it's Marco Fu with a 76 clearance who takes the opening frame. In the first match of the evening, Marco Fu has taken the opening frame from nil 55 with a 76 clearance. And there are two more matches to come. Ding Junhui versus Mark Williams. And world champion Neil Robertson versus Mark Selby. Second frame. Marco Fu to break. Oh, what a great frame of snooker that was. Two visits, all over. Well, Sean has possibility of a pot here to the right corner. And I think he can avoid everything else with the cue ball. Well done. <laughs> so often, say how important the break up shot One. is. If you don't get it quite right at this level, you can get punished. Yes, you can. If you, le if you leave that uh, sort of half ball long red, particularly if there's a natural path round behind the back of the black. Three. Yeah, Sean normally eats those. He used to just run through for the black here. Stunned run through, that's perfect. Four. Well, he won't want to make 55 here and lose the second frame. He'll be looking to make amends for that last frame, but that was a great clearance from Mark Ofu. go into these with a lot of power here just hit the red above the black might split a few more play a little a stun shot rather than a, a screw shot uh, he's going to hit these hard you always need a bit of luck and he hasn't had it Nineteen. Let's just watch this again. He's come off that first red with backspin. He probably needed to play, like I said, a, a power stun into them rather than all that backspin to take effect. But they're lucky to finish there. Well, that's loose. He's left sure the red on the left-hand side. He might have done. I'm not sure if the black could uh, 
discovered it is certainly left one to the left middle. Well, Marco, I think he's taken this red on to the left centre. No, it's a mile away. Not an easy shot, but the sort that you expect a top player to get more often than not. One. So Sean immediately back in then. And uh, well, they really want to make the most of this. Five. The, uh, get the match back level. Stunning round for the blue. Six. The problem he's got here, some of the reds are covering each other to the corner, so he could play a little stun into them, a little cannon. Nicely done. A little bit of luck at the end there, a little cannon on the red book. You expect to land on something when you go into them like that. Yes, the black uh, slightly protected from the other side by two reds. That's why he didn't take wow. the left hand red. Well, he's come straight on the blue, but he has that left and red to play on. He could just drop this in for that red. Again, though, he's got to be high for the black because 17. of the two reds which are protecting it still. Might just stun over for the black into the same corner. 18. Certainly the better option as you have the angle for it. And again, the reds are not straightforward. He still has one fairly easy open red, but he has to work the others. And those two reds look like a plant to this corner. Can you just wait at the top of the stairs, please, till we finish the frame? Referee Paul Collier, making sure that the players aren't distracted. Yes, an earlier start this evening than the norm. 26. With the three matches. Yes, perhaps that's why there are a few late comers. Time out. Well, again, those two reds set to the left corner. I had a quick look beforehand. I thought they looked fairly set. Well, not quite, just to the right corner pocket. But if he just holds the white in the middle of the table, he might be able to attack those reds from, the, from that angle. He's playing the pink, actually. And he's decided to take the pink on. Looking for a nudge, and he's missed them. And I think that might be end of break don't think anything goes to the right corner. 32. There's nothing there. Well, I don't know whether Sean can still attack these reds from where he is. The, uh, the two that were set to the left corner is not interested. He's got a 51 point lead. Mind you, we know what happened in the first frame. Sean Murphy, 32. Yes, uh, Murphy lost the first frame from 55 nil. He's 51 to nil in this second frame. And he hasn't played a safety that has put Fu in any difficulty. Not in Fu's interest that he's 
put uh, a couple of reds safe, but he had no alternative with the shot that he had. Yeah, just got to keep chipping away here and hope things open up. But this is a pretty good safety. And it's nearly a snooker. I think it is a snooker. Great shot. Yes, it's finished under the edge of the pink, of the of the yellow rather. This looks good. All play. <laughs> nice escape. Well, Sean doesn't want to take the one off the cushion. Doesn't want to split these three either. But he's got to play one shot here. We were looking to try and get him behind the yellow again, but hasn't quite got the right angle this time. Well, Tempt is on the right-hand side here for Marco, but both are tough. I don't think he's got much choice here. I think he's forced into a pot. Can't play off the red on the side cushion. This is tough. Oh, he's got a massive kick. Sounded very clunky. Sean, me time taking this red to the yellow pocket. Yes, I think he's got it. Well played. One. So here's a frame clinching chance. Well, those two reds, obviously, a bit of insurance for Sean Murphy here, but now he's got the other three open. I don't think it's going to make any difference. Yes, it's uh, easy enough for a player of his class to, to clinch the frame from the three open reds. 11. So Murphy's already done enough. Yes, he learned his lesson from the opening frame. 19. <laughs> 20. Perfect control of the cue ball. 19. Might try and nudge the red off the side cushion here with this shot. He knows the frame's safe. 27. Little exhibition shot. Unlucky. 28. Well, if he misses here, Marco will concede, of course. He still has a chance to move the one from the left cushion now. And of course, all the time, you still want to keep Marco sat in his chair if he can. And just see this red. 32. Well done. 33. Got, sorry, sorry, Clive, Mike. as I say, he hasn't had much chance in this frame, really, Marco, has he? Two good visits from Sean. <coughs> 33 on the frame, Sean Murphy. Murphy keeps two scoreless in the second frame. He makes breaks of 32 and 33 in levelling the match at one all.
We've got three matches for you tonight, in the first of which Marco Fu and Sean Murphy stand at one all. The second match is Mark Williams, China Open champion versus Ding Junhui, UK champion. And the third match is Neil Robertson, world champion versus Mark Selby, masters champion. Frame three, Sean Murphy to break. Pretty good break off shot from Sean. A little tempt on the left hand side here, but might see Marco just come off the right edge of the bunch here. And back to the ball carrier. Timeout. Yes, he's taken another timeout. That's his second so far for Marco. Yes, the second of the five which he's permitted. Caught them far too thick. Well, that could be a disaster. Never underestimate the difficulty of this game. Nevertheless, <coughs> this is a good chance. It certainly is. Black spot a little crowded, but if you can get rid of that red behind the black, well, that would be ideal. Well, he's either gone too far for one or not far enough for the other. No, is he on this Five. one near the uh, behind the black? Can't see that one. You can see the straighter one, but he's slightly hampered. Well, unlucky. Six. I think he might have just gone too far for the black. Good cue in from there, though. Can't see him taking anything Green on ball. here. It's got to be a safety. Sure Talk about fractions six. of this game, Clyde. But if, if Sean had landed dead straight on that red, he was away because the black went into the same corner. That proved my point about never minimising the difficulty of this game. Just an inch the other way and he was perfect. Well, it was difficult to get the white back to the ball carrier. Chose to leave it at this end, but uh, he has left Sean that red to the centre. Won't take the one there, it's a black, that's too difficult. He's taken the one to the right centre. Well, my apologies, elected to play safe. He's prepared to wait. I think the one you had in mind, Mike, was, was a bit thin for his taste. The cue ball would have been to the ball cushion and, and back about halfway for the red to, to reach the pocket. And uh, the pot itself was no certainty by any means. Time out. We've got one left this frame, Marco. Fu's third time out, but the second in this frame. So uh, he can only take one more time out in this frame. Yeah, so we've got nearly four, well, three and three quarter frames to go yet. He's only got, as you say, he's only got three left. No, two left. But sometimes you do need some thinking time. And this is one of those occasions. It's got to be careful of the red near the left hand cushion here. Well, he's played the white to the top cushion again. 
but he hasn't got the cue ball to that top cushion. There's a red on here, I think, for Sean. You can hold for the black into the same corner. Great cue in. One. He made that look easy, but it wasn't. It was perfect cue in. And assisted by the responsiveness of the cloth. Yeah, I think the, the cloth they've got this year, Clive, is superb. It really is responsive. Eight. It's quick. The, the guys like to play on a very fast table, just stroke the balls around on them to Nine. punch them a little bit. Well, he'll have to hurry. He's got up to uh, about uh, so down to seven seconds. Sixteen. Seventeen. So there are no obstructions round the black spot. Any more? Thirty-two. There doesn't seem to be any just cause or impediment to winning the frame at this visit. I have been going to a lot of weddings lately. <laughs> How many did you speak up at? I'll, I'll leave that to others. 40. 41. Again, a little short of pace, but it's OK. The two reds and the pink are available once he drops this blue in. But again, Sean Murphy back in the groove here. Yes, he allowed 46. the first frame to slip. But he was strong in the last one. And he's looking strong in this one. 47. Everything that Murphy does is under, underpinned by that ramrod straight cue action of his. That's why he's such a good potter. on occasions though Clive of late he lets one or two slip doesn't he one or two get away from him you know what I mean I don't know if he's quite at the top of his game like he was when he won the world title 205 but uh, I think he's beginning to get there again like 54. Mark Williams Mark Williams is back nearly playing at his best uh, and I think this man also is not far away from that but as you say can't see him losing the frame from here or you know, he should do enough now. Just needs one red. 61. 61. So it's going to be 2-1 to Murphy. And he can concentrate now on earning himself 
another thousand pounds for a century. Sixty-nine. In addition, for the thousand pounds a frame that's on offer. May have left himself rather straighter on this red than intended. Yeah, he might use the pocket here to try and get the white out for the black. Just run through a top spin. Well, just dropped it in. Well, this is tough. He might uh, just test his cue in with the pink here. No. So that's the thousand pounds that you won't have. But uh, with that 77 break, Sean Murphy leads Marco through by two frames to one. Sean Murphy leads Marco Fu by two frames to one. Up next, Ding Junhui versus Mark Williams. And after that, Neil Robertson, the world champion, versus Mark Selby, the Masters champion. Frame four, Marco Fu to break. Again, there's a possibility of a red to the right corner here. Sean can cut this one back in, and he's already had a look at it. Oh, very close, but he's got a good cue ball. Yeah, it's just overcut it, but he has covered it. Marco having to plough one down here. I think he's looking to put the white on the top cushion. Of course, Sean, one frame away from guaranteeing himself a, an extra point. Well, he won his first match against Ding Junhui. But he'll want to win this one as well. By choosing that red, he knew that he was only moving one red rather than opening the bunch and possibly leaving a red out of the bunch in a possible position. Well, that's an excellent return from Sean Murphy. As always, you have to miss those thought colours and the weight was perfect. He's got Marco in trouble again here. There's just one red sticking out there at the edge of the bunch which he's playing off. It's a thin shot though. Nicely done. Well he caught the green but it's still okay. Murphy has dominated the last two frames to the extent that he scored 167 points without reply. I was just thinking whether Sean would look at that wide, right. but what a terrific pop. Do you think he's annoyed when he lost that first frame, Clive? <laughs> Certainly played superbly since then. Beep. 
Now, has he come far enough for this Six. red? Nope. That's one to the right centre here, which he can hold for the pink. Well, nicely done. Seven. Just thinking of points without reply, it was in this uh, very arena 13. that John Higgins scored 494 without reply against Ronnie O'Sullivan in the final of the Grand Prix. 14. A record subsequently beaten by Ding Jun Wee with 495. Sean now starting to find his range and look at that 95% for Sean Murphy pop success 83 19. for Marco but this is uh, he's just switched up a gear here Sean Murphy twenty. Nothing brings up the pot success percentage as easily as a succession 26. of relatively easy shots. Twenty seven. As a red just behind the pink there. 32. Yes, able to stay on the pink. Is that uh, red just right left of the black, which is uh, which is stopping the uh, stopping the black going into the left corner? But, but there is another one just above it that he can play on. Red I mentioned will go to the right corner, but not just all about the left. Thirty-nine. Well, you can play a little cannon into the red here. Stay on the black. Well, that's okay. Forty. Now he can get rid of the offending red. 47. Well, I'm not sure about that one. He hasn't played that very well. Well, obviously the black did not go to the left corner. He was trying to get onto the pink. Time out. Try to get on pink to corner when it was easier to get on pink to middle. Yeah, I'm surprised how hard he hit it as well. Well, I think that goes. That black definitely goes. Why didn't he play on the black? That's amazing. I don't think he even looked at it, you know. That black definitely goes. Yellow ball. Murphy has taken the second of his five permitted timeouts. Sean Murphy, 48. And with a 48 point lead, has elected to tuck the yellow under the side cushion.
Murphy's safety was good enough to force a mistake but uh, it may not be as serious as it first looked but that red goes well this is a welcome respite for Fu who's uh, been given quite a going over for the last uh, two and a half frames yeah he has but the balls are positioned awkwardly but you know a chance to get back into this frame one well, he could take the brown he could take the blue I think he might take the blue actually and I can tell you that that was Marco's first pot for 31 minutes Nicely done. And he's on the red at the back of the bunch. And this will open up the three to the opposite corner. Six. Still very tough to clear from Seven. here. The way the balls are situated. Yeah, the two colours there, I mean if he even gets there, you know, he's still got the uh, five reds to go. The one that he's nearest to at the moment, he's nicely held the spot there, put the pink onto the black spot. But this would be some clearance. 13. Fourteen. You never know with these boys. They're that good that they can turn a half chance into a full one. 20. I'm surprised he isn't playing the left on red here, just to nudge that other one a little bit more away from the cushion. 21. He certainly had a chance to do it there. But maybe he can finish on the red at a suitable angle this time to can that red into position. Yeah, I think it will drop into the centre Clive but I was thinking just to bring it back into the middle of the table a little bit more 27 well that's okay he's nicely the right side of the blue and he's brought the red into the middle of the table You wouldn't put it past him, Clive, would you? Because the clearance he made in the opening frame was terrific. 33. Well, the yellow and green, if he gets there, both difficult. 34. And position from yellow to green is also difficult. Yeah, he's played that one perfectly, though. Nice angle to drop in behind this final red. Needs an angle on it to get down. Well, probably down for the blue. Well, he could have done with that white going a touch further. Now, this is a difficult pot. 40. Well, these cuts along the rail, very treacherous. May not even attempt it. Well, there's a possibility they could take this on at pace and try and nudge the yellow off that side cushion. Ah. Michael Fool 40. That's certainly what he attempted to do, but he really needed to be better on that red than he was. Yes, well, he's got himself back into this frame, though. 20. Good pace on the red. 20. Has to avoid the yellow on the side cushion here. Done well. Especially now. 
Sean can see some of this, but it's not easy to get safe from. He's coming off the top cushion. Because a thin clip would have left it over the left corner. Nicely done. This is not straightforward. Yes, he can take the black off the cushion, but where will the red finish? If he just tries to play a little delicate snooker here, he could leave the red on. Time out. He's got one left now, Marco. So that's uh, the fourth of the five timeouts that Fu is permitted. That shows just how good Murphy's safety has been. 93% of his safeties have prevented Fu from potting a ball, but only 77% of Fu's have. Well, again, pop success 94 is against 86, but it's John, the only two won the lead, and Marco's hanging on here, he could make this two apiece. He's gone for the delicate snooker, and he's played it very well. What a shot. Very clever. Time out. So Murphy takes the third of his uh, five permitted timeouts. And you could say where the balls were before Marco played that shot, that Sean was pretty much in control of this frame, but he's turned it around with that shot. And, of course, Sean now has to get the red safe, although he still has the insurance of the yellow and the green. <coughs> well, he's got to put a bit of distance here between <coughs> the cue ball and the red. And it's a tricky one to assess with the cue ball so close to the side cushion. Well, he can come off the side cushion and hit the red. I'm not quite sure where they're going, but... Now, where's he going here? He could be coming off about four cushions here. Top, side, back cushion, side cushion. Around between green and brown. <coughs> it's looking like four cushions. Well, this is, this is the long way round, but he's got the wrong angle. Is that a free ball? Miss Marco Fu four free ball. Well, it's a free ball, and he might take the yellow off the cushion here. He might not put Sean back in, Clive. He could take the yellow as the free ball while he's having the put back. That surprises me because the green's in the open. He had the free ball yellow. We could have put the yellow into the open. Well, I, I couldn't fault your reasoning there, Mike, but. Um I think Fu thought, well, it's a very tricky snooker. We may, Fashion. I may pick up uh, oh some more points from failed escapes. Just make the adjustment this time. Uh, this looking good. This is looking very good. Great shot, but he's left it on. I couldn't actually see Mike that he was going a safer way than the very short way. Nor me. Why didn't he just come off the side cushion and hit it hard and hope for the best? He's still got the insurance of green and yellow. Okay. One. And if Marco gets in behind this yellow, just off straight and gets onto the green. Well, Marco decided to have them put back, but now it might prove to be right. He's gone to nudge it. Well, that's not good. If it's not guaranteed, he should have played in behind it. Six. I think the reason he didn't was the difficulty of getting well on the green from it. Well, 
Marco Fu, six. But Marco certainly has played some solid snooker to get himself back into this fourth frame. He now leads by two. And, well, the last couple of minutes, every time Sean's come to the table, he's been in trouble. Here's another one. Well, now then the green is in the open. But he can't pop the yellow. He can lay a snooker. Which could produce a frame winning opportunity. Well, <laughs> I'm sure Sean's a bit fed up with this. Having to come off yet another cushion, if not two. But this is some good stuff being played here for Marco. Good hit. Oh, what about this one? He will be delighted with that result. I think you can see some of it, but just look at the awkward queuing. Just swerved it Foul. very slightly Almost. unintentionally. Very difficult to go plumb Sean through the centre of the cue ball with such a difficult elevated cueing. Yes, yeah, just pushed it offline. But this is not easy to get from yellow to green. Hang on, hang on. It needs to travel, it needs to travel, sure. he's okay. As long as he's not angled, he's on the green. <laughs> Just a small space between black and side cushion and Murphy can get through it. And having sure Murphy to, I didn't expect him to miss it, but that illustrates once more that these pockets give nothing away. Yep, I expect him to get this one. Well, Marco's got to play cushion first here to get out for the brown. This is not guaranteed. Well done. That's a great shot. Three. And he only needs brown, blue and pink. He won't need the awkward black here. And I'll tell you what, if he makes this two all, he will be delighted. And this will be a body blow to Sean Murphy. Seven. Only the pink Front. needed. Well, what fighting qualities by Marco Fu. <laughs> After being on the wrong end of 215 Fu. points without reply, and 48 behind in that fourth frame, Marco Fu has levelled the match at two all. Marco Fu and Sean Murphy are two all in the first match of the evening. We've got two more matches to come. Ding Jun Wei versus Mark Williams and world champion Neil Robertson against Mark Selby. Thank you, frame five. Sean Murphy to break. Well couple of frames could have gone either way of course the first one and the last but uh, fantastic fighting qualities from Marco Fu but I thought Sean had that one when he missed that green well, until he missed that green I should say and now it's game on the two frames that Fu has lost he hasn't potted a ball the frames that he's won have been from nil 55 and nil 48 Well, he might have left this red right to the black here. That wasn't as intended. Don't 
know if he can see enough of that to pot it. No, he's playing away safety. shot has covered the right hand side of the well I thought he had actually not quite I thought he covered the right hand side of the pack but he hasn't so Marco can clip off the pack here but again as always just make sure you don't push anything towards a corner pocket thickish contact to give himself a chance of getting behind brown and or yellow short of pace but no damage done was trying to get behind the brown I think it's just looking at this red left of the pink spot Clive you could Cut it back into the left corner. I think he can avoid you the pocket. And in fact, he's playing the one a bit further down, actually. Same, similar shot, though. Well played. <laughs> he's with a nice nudge, and he's got one. What an excellent one. red. While well, he's taking on the more difficult blue. He's such a good cueist, and that type of longish straight pot, he might, he might pot 10 out of 10 in practice, but in a match you only get one chance. One. Well, the high value colours are a little bit tied up at the moment, everything a little bit messy at this end of the table going to have to work very hard here to make something substantial. Slow down. And he's just going to touch far. He played on the red right of the black. Five. <coughs> Five. It's already been emphasised though this evening how tenacious Fu is. He looked in danger of being completely swamped, completely outplayed. But the match is level at two all. Indeed. Marco Fu five. He's been patient. He's waited. He's chipped away, got himself back into a couple of frames. Well, a little thinner than intended, but it's finished okay. And uh, well, just need to get these colours open really, and a few extra reds. He might be able to get him behind the yellow here if he swings the cue ball around three cushions. Too wide for that. <laughs> but he has left that red on, and he's got the angle to get back towards the bulk colours. Well, that might be just too much angle. He's, I think it would go into that red nearest the pink. But it looks like he's committing himself. Ha! 
Hang on. <laughs> well, <laughs> the bleeper going off certainly didn't help him. <laughs> I think it was closer the second time. Marco Fu earned his place in the Premier League by winning the Championship League, which is a feeder competition, which will again take place after Christmas at Crondon Park Golf Club, which has staged it for the last three, three years in four blocks of four days. Now then, can he get onto the pink here if he runs through the reds, perhaps? That's a great shot, well done. Four. Now he has a chance to open things up. He's looking at the red that's just near the black to the right corner to see if that one goes. Sure he's getting a little bit annoyed and irritated by all of this because he knows he should at least be 3-1 the lead. But um, as we said, Marco showing great fighting qualities here. And he has a wonderful chance Eleven. to put his nose in front. Black only goes to one corner at the moment. Unless it does sneak through those races. Let's just see how he plays this. He still has the pink to the middle. Well, the black 18. will go. That's a definite. There's room there. Still two obvious open reds, but there's another one available after those two. 34. But I think he might still have to disturb something to make it into a frame winning chance. Now then, can he hold for this red right to the black? to be straight on this red just to drop it in for the angle on the black run into the other reds played it with check side 42 but as I say there's still one red available there to the left corner and he leads by 46 well done Forty-nine. Now he just needs to be high on the black here to disturb the two reds near the top cushion. That's perfect. Fifty. If this goes right, this could be a frame-winning opportunity. Played it with precision. Played the cannon onto the edge. 
of the left hand red. And this is frame ball. Well, again, when he got the chance, he's worked them very well. Sean Murphy now needs a snooker. And, well, he'll have to battle for that final frame. Timeout. Well, Fu has taken his fifth and last uh, timeout, which is which is slightly odd because uh, he's already in the position where his opponent needs a snooker. Yeah, just make sure of the black here, really. Make sure of the colour. He's looking at the pink, but he could really do with this going in. Well done. And he's on the red to the middle. Well, again, this is a, a wonderful contribution considering where the balls were when he started. 64. Sixty-five. Outside chance of the century. No more than that. Well, he's going to be delighted, Clyde, that he's going into the lead at 3-2. Sixty-seven. What a pity. 67 and the frame. I don't think he's too bothered about the century. The 67 break, though, has guaranteed Marco Fu a 3 2 lead over Sean Murphy. So he's certain of at least a draw. Marco Fu is sure of at least a draw in uh, the opening match this evening. He leads Sean Murphy 3-2. Ding Junhui and Mark Williams are waiting in the wings. And uh, after them, it's Neil Robertson, the world champion, versus Mark Selby. Final frame of this match, Marco Fu to break. Well, just looking at a few stats now, look at that, 79% each for the safety success and POC success and nothing in that as well, 91%. How that has changed around actually in the last half an hour or so. Well, in the last half hour, Marco Fu has had a break of 40 in winning the fourth frame and one of 67 in taking the last. And he's in again. Great red. One. And that's a great shot to find the gap there. Eight. Well, Sean Murphy, with that opening frame, must be thinking... Nine. Really, that's, I'm going to take control. And it looked like from the, well, the first visit in the opening frame. I don't think he expected this at all. Sixteen. He's still on the black. <laughs> yes, that could have gone wrong, but uh, played with check side, so that the cue ball was never going to go 
all that far into the middle of the table. Well, just concentrate on the pot here and let the rest happen. <coughs> He's overcut it. He's missed it. Marco Fu, 17. And that could be the difference between a 4-2 win for Fu and a 3 all draw. Not that it was easy. But Sean has had a little bit of time One. in his chair. And he's snooking himself on the black, so he'll take the green. Just come far enough for this bottom red. Thirteen. Bramble. Bramble. Seventeen. Eighteen. He's lost the cue ball. I wasn't sure whether he was going to go into them there. There's still a red available to the left corner though. Twenty-five. But this should have been much easier. Well done. 26. I think he'd like to have been on the pink there because then that would have made the blue possible to both middles well he's now looking at the blue to still over for the red on the left hand side I think there might still be one to the right corner as well expect him to get this well done one available but he's going to take the one to the left corner okay. 35 and we've already seen that red will pass the opposite corner having said that it might be a little bit straight on this black so you could play on the red to the centre no I think I can just well there's a couple that go there actually Oh, I think he's just got there. Got a slight heavy contact there. 42. <coughs> 43. Well, I think yellow might be favourite because he's landed straight on the green and there's a red available to the left corner. I don't know if he can get any angle out of the green. 
Can he come down the table past the pink? He's gone for the red to the right centre. That's fair enough. Forty six. Nicely done. Now he has the chance to win the train. Leads by 37. 54. Red and black will be enough, but can he get through for the black? I don't think so. Might have to go down the table. 55. Still need to colour a, a one more red here. <coughs> Unless he takes the pink. Or the blue. I thought he played the cannon on the pink from the, from the red to leave himself on the blue. Yeah, possibly, Clive. But this is frame ball anyway, is it there? Oh, now then. Sean Murphy, He'd have taken the yellow, it required one more red. That was frame ball. But he's missed it. So, an unexpected chance for Foo to snatch a win. One. Well, he cannot believe he's missed that pink. He knew that was a frame ball for a three-all draw. He might not get anything out of this match now. And at the beginning of this match, he looked very good. Eight. Um, Marco might just drop this red in for the pink. I think the black goes anyway. But this would be a great victory. Nine. He's worked very hard this evening, Marco Foot. He certainly has. He's won two frames from well behind. Nil 55, nil 48. And here he needs a clearance from two reds out to complete a 4-2 win. Yeah, that's not perfect though. He's going to have to come off the back cushion for the green. And of course, no more timeout, so he's got to keep one eye on the 18. shot clock as well. I don't think, considering the position of the balls, that, that would be a problem, just as well. Indeed. 21. But this would be a good victory, like I said. He has had to work very hard this evening to pinch a couple of frames. Sean Murphy will be so disappointed because he hit the ground running in that opening 25. frame and we thought oh here we go it might be another match like against Ding Junhui when he won 5-1 and he was probably expecting that as well but at the moment he's looking like a loss to him by four frames to two but every credit to Marco Fu 30 and he won't miss from here 36 great skill immense tenacity in winning three frames from well behind. Marco clears up with 43 and beats Sean Murphy by four frames to two. It's a draw and a win for Fu from his first two matches. Welcome back to the Premier League snooker. That was the result from match number one. We started slightly earlier tonight at 6pm. We've got three matches for you. And Sean Murphy, the man on form at the moment, losing by four frames to two against Marco Fu. Our second match features Ding Junhui, the UK champion, against the China Open champion, Mark Williams. That should be an absolute corker. And talking of corkers, they don't come bigger and better than that one, do they? Current world number one and world champion and world open champion, Neil Robertson, against the Masters champion, the brilliant 
Mark Selby. But that win for Marco Fu puts him at the top of the table. Uh, this is how the table looked at the end of last year if you turn it upside down because Marco Fu last season in the Premier League finished bottom with three points and look at that he's played two and already has got the same amount of points. A very happy Marco Fu. Sean Murphy's still up there, the Rocket and Mark Williams but it's a long way to go. But Marco Fu you can't do better than beat the players in front of you. You must be over the moon with that victory. Yeah, yeah, I'm really happy because Sean, you know, the way he was playing, I won the first frame, but he played really well after that. So it look, looked like he was going to go and win like 5 one 4 2 at least because the way he was playing. But a couple of nudges here and there, and he, he was a bit unlucky, to be honest, with the run of the balls, and I managed to steal, steal a few frames off him. So, um, yeah, the momentum just turned around. At 2 1 down, are you sat in your seat? Are you thinking, I'll take a point here, I'll do this, I'll do that? Or is that completely oblivious and you just get up when it's your shot and play the the next shot I try not to think too much just play the shots in front of you because like anything can happen in this game you can win like four mm. or five frames on the shot in no time sometimes you lose like keep losing and it's, it's tough to uh, predict what's going to happen so yeah just take it uh, what, what's available then I'll just take the balls uh, two one down you won the next three obviously the last one was the one that clinched maximum points for you as a snooker player when you come to the table there's two reds or three reds left and people expect you to clear up is there more pressure on you or is it slightly easier because there's so little to do um, depends on how you feel the last last the last frame um, when when Sean missed I, I felt like I could clear up but sometimes it it doesn't look as, as easy as it, it looks sometimes because like we, we can miss like all any shots in the world and sometimes mm. we can make great clearances it's tough to say sometimes but yeah towards the end I, I felt comfortable because I got a point on the board which is like re re very important for me and because Sean is a great player so um, yeah I suppose the, the, the pressure wasn't that great towards the end but it's still it's great to win against Sean there must have been a moment in that frame in the last frame where you thought you know what Sean might not even get a shot because you were on for the maximum I know it was so early but you went for a very very tricky black you're obviously thinking 147 um, no 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 oh. no because because um, <laughs> like the black I, I, I thought it was um, the shot to play but um, but I wasn't really thinking of uh, the maximum I was thinking about the century though but this on 17, so... <laughs> okay. Mark Selby playing tonight as well. You've got him, your next opponent. Will you be watching the game with any interest? Will you be just tell me the result? How does that work? Um, no, I mean, it does, doesn't really matter if he plays great uh, or he plays poor. It doesn't really matter because like, the next match is going to be like a week or two away mm. from now. So everything's going to be different uh, from now. So I, 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 I'm concerned about the results, but I don't really care how he plays. or cause it, you know it's going to be a tough game anyway against Mark, so it doesn't really matter. And finally, you're sat at the top now of the Premier League. Honestly, Marco, are you thinking already, I could qualify, I could qualify, honestly? Yeah, of course, of course, I've got a chance of qualifying, but I'm not sure whether there's a great chance. Because like all the players, as you said, it's, they're, really, they're great players. Mm. And like sometimes it's very difficult to get a point off them, any, any of them. So, I mean, uh, still a long way to go. So, um, yeah, but it's, it's a great start. He's indeed a long way for the time being. Thank you very much. Marco Fu, everyone. Thanks, Marco. Great win for Marco Fu. Top of the league as well. Loads more snooker still to come. We're going to have a quick break. More when we come back. Welcome back to the PartyCasino.com Snooker Premier League. Confirmation of match number one. There's three tonight. We started at six o'clock. Sean Murphy lost to Marco Fu. A great win there for Marco Fu. Four frames to two. Next up, Ding Junhui against Mark Williams. And we finish with an absolute corker as well. World champion Neil Robertson against Masters champion Mark Selby. All that means, this is how the league table currently looks. A great win for Marco. Takes in... Takes him top of the tree. Sean Murphy in second place. The Rocket and Mark Williams make up the top four. Remember, the top four go through to finals weekend towards the end of November. OK, on with the show. Time to meet our next player. And first up, it's Mark Williams.
good to see you, Mark. Uh, a great start for you in the Premier League the last time you played. Uh, already a victory under your belt, and that means still unbeaten in five years in the Premier League. Yeah, only one game though, but uh, I'm just happy. I was, I won the first game. Really, I was two 0 down, looking like I could get an hammering off Selby, but managed to come in and sneak a win. So I'm looking forward tonight. And hopefully, I can play quite well. Uh, now, um, the, the Premier League, we always say, is one of the hardest leagues, if not well, probably the hardest league in, in the snooker calendar. Um, when you're playing a game like tonight and it's a packed house and you've, you've been down the rankings for so long, I mean, you're currently number six in the world. You slipped to mid-40s. At one stage, I think, Mark, I was actually ranked higher than you uh, in, in snooker. But <laughs> sadly, I think that's a true fact as well. But from your point of view now, you're coming back into the game. You're now number six. You could, there's nothing stopping you getting back to two, if not one in the world. But you've been there, done it and seen it. So from your point of view, do you have a name or are you just enjoying it now? Just enjoying it a lot more. And uh, my aim is just to do as well as I can in every competition and hopefully pinch one here and there. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, I haven't played in this competition for five years and uh, it's probably one of the toughest lineups mm. that I've played in. And, uh, you know, a anyone could win it. As you've been slipping down the rankings in the last few years, your opponent tonight has been coming up. Have you ever met, have you ever played when you're at the top of your game? Because obviously now, I'm guessing this will be the first time you're playing Ding when he's fancied, but you've got the game to beat him as well. You're just going to keep bringing up that I went down to 40 <laughs> in the rankings here. Yeah? Well, no, so you're, I'm saying you're in, it's in a good position you're in now because I'm sure years ago when you like ranked three or four, whatever in the world, and world champion, I'm guessing it was probably before Ding's time. Yeah, probably. I mean, I've been watching Ding the last few years and, you know, he's one of the best players in the world and it's going to be very tough to beat and uh, I'm, sh I'm sure he's going to win the world title uh, sooner than later. I mean, I think everyone fancies him to win the title, but hopefully, you know, he don't play very well tonight. You're going to go for one four seven If it's on after two reds, you're going to ask the referee if there's a maximum prize pot? Um, I'll try and get the one three four, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Play safe on the pink. Just that'd, that'd, one that'd be nice. <laughs> Best of luck. Mark Williams, everyone. Thanks, Mark. he doesn't miss that pink. Mark's opponent tonight is the brilliant Ding Zhongwei. Mike Hallett and Neil Folds will take you through our second match of the evening. Mark, do you want to call? Thank you, Andy. It's a tail. Ding, you won. Our second match yeah. of this evening and okay. another cracking match to look forward to. The first frame. Ding Jun Wee to break. Well, the bookies couldn't separate him at the end, of the, at the beginning of the evening, I should say. I just wonder whether they will be able to separate each other. Well, the frame scores, of course, after the six have been played. Well, they had a good match in Glasgow. Uh, Ding led two 0 and Mark Williams rattled off the three frames and took the victory. Actually, ended up losing in that same fashion. To Neil Robertson in the semi-finals did Mark both play attacking forms of the game though well he nearly flipped the red to the centre <laughs> and took it red there he has the brown to the centre well, if he wishes. Almost played it too well, didn't he? He'll be playing in behind the yellow here. I want to say he played it too well. He, he played it knowing he wouldn't Mark necessarily Williams pop it. And <laughs> so he got the safety shot perfectly as well. Just a one cushion escape. I 
don't think it's quite a touching ball. Of course, Mike Williams had that terrific win over Mark Selby, 4-2 at Plymouth. But of course, Dings and Wheat, well, you want to forget about his loss to Sean Murphy, 5-1. So, looking to put things here, or put things right here this evening, I should say. That's a good safety from Ding. Mark just tapped the table. The left-hand side of the pack have been completely cut off by the shot that Ding played. Yellow blocking the left-hand side. And looks like he's playing a pot here. Tried to get the cue ball back, but you can never be sure where the Reds are going to finish. Well, this one is possible to the centre. Well, he chose to attack. He didn't quite threaten the pocket. Well, Dinger certainly struggled a bit early season, but you just feel that if he is going to come to life, it'll be in the Premier League because he is suited to the format, I've always thought. OK, he had that bad defeat to start this year's campaign, but you just know that at some point he's going to do some damage. The shot clock really makes no difference to him. He's another quick thinker. Three. Four. Has a good angle on the blue here, if he wishes just to go in to them at medium pace. Could play the yellow. Probably wants to hit the red right of the pink. Uh, about full ball, half ball on the right hand side. But you must remember to pot the blue. Ding Jun Wee, four. Yeah, that can happen. You can sometimes put so much into the positional side that you forget the pot. Now, Mark's looking at this red to the centre. I was wondering if the black was available, but it doesn't look like it. So he's playing on the pink to the centre, I think. Well, he hasn't quite gone far well. enough on the pink, but it goes to the green pocket. Yeah, if he plays it, he's got to get it. Got a red over the right corner. He's, uh, he's already had a good look here. Running a little bit short on time, so he's going to have to get down and play this fairly quickly. Well, he is taking it on. Perhaps a timeout Mark could have been taken. Well, I guess the players are a bit reluctant early to take timeouts, but you're right, in the end, he had to slightly rush it. Uh, from that, we know the black does not pop. So what? he'll be looking to get that pink into play. The reds are nicely spread. It's just a question of which colours pop. The pink will pop to the right corner after it's respotted, so it might be a good chance. Yeah, he didn't want that. Even though he's on a red to the right middle, didn't want to finish on the side cushion. So he's got to play one another recovery shot here. Yeah, as long as he's got a slight angle Seven. off this red, he can get down for the blue, but if it's straight, then he's in trouble. He can't draw him well. He could drop the red in dead weight. He still has the blues at the corner. But these are never easy going across the table. Might just might have this enough angle. Well, he didn't. So he's having to play Eight. the blue to the corner. I don't think the pink goes. Still has to play a good positional shot here, though, for the next red. It could be a red just behind the pink that's available. Nicely done. And once again, the cue ball, not where he wanted it, so 
just feel the pressure's building, even a, in a small break like this, where 13. he's played two or three difficult shots in a row. Here comes another one that's got to be judged perfectly. I just got to play a little cannon. Well, he should be okay now. 14. Yeah, as you mentioned that, Neil, it's a terrific match between these two a few days ago in Glasgow. Of course, today is another day and another dollar. Well, he, and the way he got up from that, I just wonder if he's on the next red. He looked a little bit disappointed as he stood up from the previous shot. Sometimes 20. body language is all you've got when you get the opponent sitting in the chair. I'd say he's not on that. Well, here you can see, he doesn't think he can get to enough of the red to pot it. If he can, it's with a little bit of side. And he's already taking a good while on this. Maybe a timeout. Uh, looks like he's playing a containing safety. Ding Junwei, 20. Well, that's OK, as long as he hasn't put these two reds onto a plant to the left corner. Mark's looking at these two reds now. If not, well, yeah, I think he's going to play safe, actually. He was contemplating it. Where's the cue ball? It's okay now. Yeah, I think that's as he played it actually. I call that a bit fat, that safety. Hasn't got uh, all that far up the table. What's he left? There is a red that pots to the right corner, but it is a difficult one. One that even Mark Williams might not fancy. He's probably tempted by the little shield he's got there, the, the green and the brown close together. That's uh, where he'd like to get in behind. The player will always look for that, the bolt colours close together. And he's exploited it. It's a really good safety shot. <coughs> yeah, you can see there. This is a nasty little shot to play. The Reds aren't close to a cushion here. So it looks like he's playing two cushions to glance. Thin off a red. This can go wrong. Well, he's played it the cautious way first time. Oh. Often you see players who missed that shot. Mark Williams. They're on the side of missing it or hitting it very thin. He hopes to do better the second chance. He can certainly get a bit more practice at it here. So he's going straight back. He's playing at two cushions just to okay. glance thin off of those two reds close together. Yes, and because he can't see a ball on, it won't be three strikes and you're out. Well, too narrow again. <coughs> trouble with this shot well, is you can actually find Williams yourself four. having yeah. seven or eight goes at this, and the option, other alternative is to overcompensate and just smash into all the reds. I've seen that happen before. Yeah, he needs um, about a quarter ball contact. I think he's trying to hit the one that's in the middle of the table, just beyond the pink. No. <coughs> After all, the points can build up under the missed rule. Mark Williams, four. And Mark won't even get out of his chair. Straight back for more. I think it would help if he was away from the cushion. He could play it with a little bit of right-hand side and just swing it wider off the cushions, but he can't really do that. Is take four. Well done. <laughs> yeah, I think the natural angle, the middle pocket was slightly in the way there. But he's done well to get the white down the other end of the table. It's the sixth meeting between these two. And head to head, it's 3-2 to Mark Williams, of course, just mentioned that winning Glasgow a few days ago. Well, a little bit more would have been handy. Would have been right behind the green. I don't think.
think he'll take the straight red on. Too dangerous. There's a possibility of trying to cut this one into the corner and take the cue ball down the table, but uh, it's a very thin cut. Well, it's okay. It's a good cue ball. that too thin he needs some luck here well the first red's not going to be absolutely straightforward for Dink whichever one he plays but th after that a great chance with the reds open and all the high colours on so it's all about this opening red here nicely done bang in the middle one. Probably play the brown here to get closer to these reds. If he plays the blue, he could contact that red near the top cushion, but well, he has to hurry up here with the shot clock. Timeout. Yes. <coughs> That's why he decided to take a timeout. First one for him, first one of the match. As we've already mentioned, both players allowed three timeouts in one in any one Six. frame and five maximum in the match. He's got to be careful here. Might have to cannon the other red. Yeah, no choice really. He played it well enough. Seven. He's gonna, ha he's gonna have to take the cue ball in out of bolt though. not perfect with the pink Twelve. and black out of commission and pink is available if you get the cue ball in the right spot but he still needs a good pot here to continue I think he's cutting this into the center he was out of position which made the pot Twelve. much harder yeah I think he just picked a little bit of side on this and pushed it onto the object ball turn to be the wrong side of the blue <coughs> problem was when Ding got out of position earlier on he pushed the pink awkward and blocked the, the black pocket as well just judging by the way he's played this he knocks in this red he's going towards the pink and black Six. with the cue ball and whether he'll play the cannon or try to develop one of them but he might do it's on Yeah, he thought he'd take a risk. He's been unfortunate Seven. there, really. He's especially pushing the red over the pocket because now it's got to keep the, that safe now. That's the worry. Just rolling up to the black, cover that red with the pink. Now Mark it's Dean's problem. Seven. kind of shot was that? I mean that's one of the worst shots I've ever seen him play. He couldn't possibly not stick the red. I think he was just trying to get underneath the red perhaps Neil you know to get the other side of it. Caught it too thick. It was a terrible shot. Mm. <coughs> one. Well I could take the blue to the corner here. There's a, we'll have a quick look at Ding in the chair but I think he's taking it to the centre actually. That's a clever shot, played with a lot of right hand side. And I think if he holds the red, or the cue ball, to say where the red is, he Six. should be on the pink. Four. 
seven. It's nice to see Mark back in the winner's enclosure this year when he beat uh, he actually beat Ding Junhui, Ding Junhui of course in the China Open in Beijing by ten frames to six. And uh, well, he's back where he belongs really, back in the top eight. I just feel that he's going to pinch the first frame here. If he can get straight on the black from this, 13. it's absolutely perfect. No, he hasn't 14. quite gone straight, so he's got to play a little delicate screw now, which will land him on the red, but not quite how he would have liked. Yeah, still not quite sure of that shot Ding was trying to play with that safety on the red. Just give him Mark this chance. The trouble is, I guess sometimes, you know, you can, you can sense that the clock's ticking down and uh, he'd already used a timeout. Maybe he thought, well, I just got better hit, get down and hit it. And that's what he did in the end. 22. Sometimes I think it does play tricks on your mind. You've got so long every shot. Now, can he bring the cue ball across for that yellow? I think he can. He's got a 13 point lead here. He needs yellow, green and brown. 27. Okay. 29. Well, that's just about sealed the frame now, that shot. Thirty six. Yes, this is a quick check of the scoreboard. He knows he's done enough. Forty one. Forty seven. Fifty four on the frame. Well, oh, brilliant. It was a hard fought opening frame between these two, but the Welshman is taking it with that clearance of fifty four. He leads Ding Junhui by one frame to nil. Well, the first match this evening saw Marco Fu win against Sean Murphy by four frames to two. Mark Williams leading Ding Junhui by one frame to nil. And of course, the last street for you, the world champion, Neil Robertson against Mark Selby. Oh, and he's caught those a little bit thick. I think we'll probably have a go at this. But uh, he did miss a couple of shots in that first frame, so those things play on your mind. It's will make him confident if he knocks this in. Mm, hit it very thick, didn't he? Not particularly close. Yeah, Mark got away with that a little bit because it wasn't a great break off shot. But he's looking at this red to the green pocket. Well done. Pink goes as well. One. Pop. As you said, Mike, it is good to see Mark Williams back winning again. I mean, it's good to see him back in the Premier League. I believe he just fell out of love with the game for maybe three seasons, for whatever reason. And uh, It's just signs that he's enjoying himself. And I think, you know, second time around, sometimes Eight. I think you appreciate and you know, enjoy the success even more than and he did so as a young man. Yeah, I would say less expectation, but the pressure's off a little bit more. And uh, as you say, you know, he's, he's found his enthusiasm again. And uh, he's enjoying his snooker. He can relax. 13. You know, and all of a sudden, he's not 14. far away from his best. And a force to be reckoned with in the game once more. 
I think you can take the success for granted as a young man. Everything that goes with playing a sport. And uh, it's only in the, sort of the low times that if you can get a second chance, then you know, things can really be more enjoyable. Seems that way. Got to hurry up here, though. In the end, he played it well. If he's straight on this, he can play on the black. Yes, the yellow just going in front of its own spot, actually. It's got to be nearest to the top cushion. 16. There's no spots available. Yeah, 17. Which, uh, as you say, I mean, it's made things a bit tricky. It's tied up two of the colours, but he'll have his eye on opening the pack in the next couple of shots here. Well, he got a well, kick there. Yeah, he's got a massive kick. Mark Williams, 17. Strange one, that, because the kick made the pot miss on the thin side, which is most unusual. If you get a kick, you'll miss a pot thick, but made a, it's like two rocks going together, that was. Well, I was wondering why he tried just to play the straight screw back. I thought he would have stunned off the top cushion. Having said that, Dean was not able to take advantage. And what's the shot here? We've got he's having, uh, the black ball cleaned actually in his own time, but it won't affect him. There's Ding. Now Mark has got a choice. Will he go into the reds? Will he crash into them and take a risk? Yep. And it is a risk because you never quite know if you're going to land on a colour. Good shot. Quite. But he's on the blue to the corner. And he's got them open. Well, it was just a minor glitch, really, the, the black that he missed, having got the kick, but he's immediately back to the table, which doesn't always happen. Six. Well, this Seven. time he's able to get the black back under its own spot, and that will help matters. Might just screw across the face of the blue here. Fourteen. Well, we'll go back for the blue here. Put this off this red. Fifteen. Yeah, perfect now. Even though he's queuing up, it doesn't really matter on this shot. He's got a great touch, uh, Neil, hasn't he, when 21. he puts it all together? Yeah, and he keeps the game simple, doesn't he? He doesn't play complicated shots. He, he's always been the same. Even that shot was uh, nicely played. Round two cushions for a choice of reds. 28. Well, a great chance here to take a 2 0 lead. He's just taking a time out. He wants to have the white cleaned, and I think he can get to the uh, potting angle here. So that's one time out each, then. Still four left for each player. He's not quite sure that he can get enough of that, but he still has the alternative. Well, he, he sounds something's on the black ball now. He's uh, had the cue ball cleaned twice. The black ball's been scrubbed about three times. I think thinking about that kick he got a few shots ago. But as it happens, he's uh, a little bit low on this next red. So he's got to control the cue ball here. And again. You're right about the touch, it was there again. Made that shot looked quite simple, but on these fast cloths you can lose the cue ball if you're not careful. Well, he still needs a colour off this red here to put himself safe in this second frame. Might just, well, just nudge the pink 14. and yellow open, he could do that. He'll finish on brown or green. Well, 
James just to make sure for the 41. colour. 41. Well, this is frame ball, whatever he takes here. Brown or green. Probably the green, actually. I mean, it looks like the brown. Has he nudged them? Oh, he's OK. Has one to the centre, but it's slightly awkward. 45. But already, Ding needs a snooker. Well, but this frame is over now. Well, another kick. Yeah, I think uh, I'm quite happy to get a kick at this stage of a frame when it's over. The other one didn't prove costly either, thankfully. I really like to see that player getting a kick, which uh, cost him. So, a good start for Mark this. And there's another thing that he does very well. He can drop balls 52. in. Very good at that. Well, just evidence there of well, how confident he is at the moment and how well he's queuing. He has worked terrifically hard over the last couple of seasons to get himself back up the list. Fifty-nine. And this man has the game. And this shot clock suits him 16. as well. He's pretty rapid around the table. So, you know, you never know. He could be one of the favourites this year. 15. Well, the frame is safe. And of course, to make the century and the extra thousand pounds, just look where the yellow and pink are. 67. Yeah, it's going to have to be a cannon, isn't it, from the blue? It's the only chance he's got here. He's got to try and go into these, and the cannon doesn't make you think you'll get on the yellow. It's not a natural. <coughs> well, he's got some sort of a shot at it anyway. Yeah, terrific shot. We can met the 100 dead here. The remaining ball colours. Oh, so the remaining colours, I should say. Of course, the bought ones as well. Oh, it's just moved a little bit on the nap. 73 on the frame, Mark Williams. What a Williams. shame there. But that 73 from Mark Williams has put him into a 2-0 lead. Welcome back to Preston then, our first match of the evening saw Marco Fu with a great win against the former world champion Sean Murphy. And you've just seen there with that 73 from Mike Williams, he leads Ding Junhui by two frames to nil. And of course, to come still, Neil Robertson against Mark Selby. OK, Ding. Yeah. Thank you, ladies and gents, the third frame, Ding Junhui to break. Well, Dig, when lining up his break-off shot, looked at his back arm. I think we've all done that, but it's not great when you do that. It makes him think he's looking at his grip or something. Maybe something's not quite right there, but usually it's completely in the mind. As is much of snooker. Yes, and that red that he missed the corner was unexpected, Neil, wasn't it? To allow Mark in with that 73. And he had the chance there. Couldn't take it, but he's going to have to start. We saw you see Mark there, but he'll be delighted with this start. But Ding Junhui really has to pick up here. 15. I mean, he's, he's a terrific player, he's Ding. He's, he's twice UK champion. He's won other ranking tournaments, but... I always feel sometimes just you can pick up vibes with him. He loses a couple of frames. And his B game's not maybe as strong as the other players. His A game is tremendous, but the pots don't go in. Sometimes he drops his shoulders a bit. And he's nowhere near that. And it's often a worry when you see him in that state of mind. Well, he's covered that one over the corner, but Mark will take this one onto the yellow pocket. Bang in the middle. 
Juan. Three. It's just landed a little bit awkward over the blue for this red near the corner. It still has the other one though. But the one to the left would be better. Might have to use the spider. Time out. Well, Mark Williams taking a time out. Yeah, I mean, he, he didn't really want to play the red with the spider in the left corner but the other red I don't think he's got the even though he's a left-hander he doesn't seem to have much of an angle to get onto a color from the red on the right of the table so he's he's left with this one and it's not really the pot it's just a question of controlling things he's had a look to see if the black will pass the red that he's going to play so in the end he goes for the red which will clear the pocket controlling the cue ball is the only worry here yes because you bounce in the white and it can go offline Hang on, he needs a good kiss. Not bad. Four. You can go between yellow and brown here and get onto that red right of the pack. Could still go the other way. Well, this is all about pace. No. Well, I felt he played it the more difficult way, but it's still on. But now then, where's the white going to finish after this shot? It doesn't matter if you miss the pot. Now, has he been lucky? Mark Williams, nine. I think he's covered this red over the corner. Well, he's already put his hand up and apologised, so Dink's going to have to play a, a good shot if he. Uh, any chance of putting that, I don't think it will even swerve. Yeah, the red could have done with being a little bit near the corner pocket. Well, Foul. that is unlucky, I've got to be honest. That's one of those things you, you know in the back of your mind that you could go in off that, but if, when you do, it's just bad luck. Well, it's all going wrong at the moment. Settle down, please. One. No, it's not perfect. <coughs> it's got the pink to the centre. <laughs> I'll be taking the one to the centre. Seven. Here. Well, now I want to get into them because I don't Eight. think there's anything there available. So if he can just hit the pack below the green, that would be perfect. Well, that's careless. Mark Williams, eight. Now, I think he had it with um, not too much pace, otherwise he might have not had the angle to go into them, but didn't play it particularly well. Now the red does pass the black, it would seem. Ting had a look. And things have got to start happening fairly soon for Ding. One. Yeah, and also with this shot, there's no reds there, so he's got to play a good shot here to get into them. Can he play the power stunt into the pack? I don't know if he can play off two cushions here. He might just be able to avoid the yellow. Now, was he spotted? A red to the right middle, perhaps? Six. This one just at the back of the pack might go. There is room there, and he can get out to the black. Well played. Seven. Yeah, I think he'd like to be straight on this black or straighter. Great pot, here it is again, that he found. Keyboard just didn't run up straight enough because the red, as you can see at the bottom of the pack on that shot, will pot. Oh. Can he hold it? 
It's a better shot than it looked. He almost held it too much there. I think from Ding's perspective here, Neil, he's got to put this frame away, put 14. it on the board. Otherwise, I think Mark could run away with this match. Well, if he's going to win the match, he's certainly got to win this frame. 15. But uh, at the moment, I don't know where you start. Do you start with trying to make a 30 or a 40 break? Because he looks a little bit short on confidence. And build from there. It's always the way when you come to the table and you're, you're struggling often, the balls aren't there for you. So he's got to make something happen. And this next red onto the colour will be the key. If he finds an angle, it can disturb a few reds. Yes, we saw Marco Fu against Sean Murphy in our first match this evening really dig in and win a couple of frames. 19. Probably wasn't entitled to, actually. And that's what uh, Ding has to do here. Well, the right-hand red of uh, the six, if he hits into that one, you'd hope that he could stun one or two out into open play. That's what he's played. Played it quite tentatively, though. It may be that it's all right. The red at the bottom of the pack might part. The other one's out in the open as well, so not so bad. Yeah, 26. I think he can get that one. And also it will open up another red to the opposite corner. Twenty-seven. Thirty-four. Yeah, this one goes, and he's also eyeing up the plant that's possibly there as well. That will be a bit later on in the break. So things looking up. Thirty-five. Just left this black a little straight, if anything. But he'll come around for the red into the centre pocket. Well, as I say, that plot, from what we saw, seems to be bang on. The reds are close enough together, so you won't be playing into the three reds because it's, it's no problem, really, this plant. Almost harder to miss, I think. And, uh, well, there is one safe red, but if he takes three reds 48. with colours here, he won't need it. There it is. Absolutely. Bang on. And 49. now he's checking to see if the red that he planted the other one on will pop into the same pocket. Well, it looks like it will. If not, the one above it might. Yeah, I think that left-hand one will just go. Looks very tight. He thinks it does. Yeah, it's a good break. This is a good break. Had no real 56. fluency prior to this. And he needs one further red. 57. And that is absolutely perfect to drop him behind the red below the pink. Well, considering he's been a little bit out of sorts so far, Ding Zhenhui, this is a good response. And he needed 62. it. 62. He's just checked the scoreboard. He knows this is frame ball. 63. Well, I think he was trying to push the pink towards the middle, but he's over hit that by a mile. Just rechecking the scoreboard. He's safe at the moment, but another five points would be handy if he pots the blue. Great shot. Well, I think the frame is absolutely safe now. And again, with this break being on 68, 68. He, he could make a, a century. This next red's not easy by any means. Blind pocket. Nope. Yeah, not this time. 68 on the frame, Ding Junhui. Yes, Mark can see the frame, and I said with Ding Junhui, he had to respond, and he has done. That 68 break from him has clawed one back. He's only now 2-1 behind.
Well, welcome back to the Guildhall at Preston here. This was seen earlier this evening. Marco Fu with that wonderful win against Sean Murphy by four frames to two. And in the second match, Ding Jun Wee with that 68 break in the third, clawing a frame back, but Mark Williams still leads by two frames to one. And again to come, the world champion, world number one now official against the former Masters champion, or the Masters champion, I should say, Mark Selby. Frame four, Mark Williams to break. I think this is an important frame for Ding Junhui here, Neil. If he can win this one, he's got a chance of winning the match, but 3-1, I think Mark could get stronger and stronger. Yeah, it's a, a shot that he caught all wrong there, actually. That's too thin. He could have left an easier opener. But he'll be delighted with that response in the last frame. This is tough. Well, he nearly got it the second time. He's left one. Along the cushion to get Dings and we going. Here it is. You never quite know where they're going to finish when you play those. They had no real choice. Well, I know that Ding, most players are the same, but he would certainly be very happy to be in around the black spot. That's where he is superb. And he's already in there. Yeah, I think winning that last frame just might give him that little boost of confidence. Well, he got a kick there. He's OK. Yeah, I mean, he's on the red that he didn't really know he was going to land on, but it is all right. Nine. Just may nudge the Reds again, he doesn't have to. But that's the way he plays, you see. There are six or seven open Reds, or maybe not that many, but now they're all in the open. So that's why he's such a dangerous scorer. A lot of players would have just taken the five or six 16. Reds that were on. He's developed everything now. Yeah, that was very aggressive there. 17. temptation if he can 24 to stay on the black here from this next red uh, as it happens looks like he's playing with topspin so that might not be the case well as always the priority is to win the 25. frame he still had a, another red to the right center actually thought he might have stayed on the black but you know he's got that last frame under his belt and he wants to make it to all especially with all these reds open can't blame him. Well, the one four seven has gone, 31. but perhaps a one four six. Uh, pretty rare, those are. Do you see them occasionally? This moment in time, we're looking for about right. an 86 just to win this frame. <coughs> Do you know, for one minute, I thought he'd miss that. He didn't play it very well. He's uh, he's on a red, but 39. Yeah, we did mean it. 
can't quite work out what he played. Missed the red on the thin side. I'm surprised the keeper didn't travel further up the table. Well, he's, he's kind of made a little bit of hard work of this the last 40. couple of shots, but it'll only take one decent shot to get him back into prime position. Yes, back in good position now, though. Probably take the right hand red. 44. Forty-five. Well, he's beginning to find his range, but a few of these pots not exactly going in the middle of the pockets. Well, he needs a stun shot here off the top cushion. One of those three reds. Could have done with a touch more. He's left it short. I just wonder if he's slightly concerned about the back cushion being a 52. bit slow. Because two or three times he's finished short and he's bounced off the cushion there. And uh, once again, 53. he's got a slightly awkward shot because of it. Just sometimes feel that when a player gets further and further out of position, the pressure's building up. This is another good shot required. He knows, really, this should have been under control, this break. Expect him to get the blue, but he got to negotiate the vault colours. Well done. Fifty-eight. Fifty-nine. Now, once again, a bit straight here, so he's going to play mid-range shot, leaving the cue ball somewhere near where the blue will be respotted, I think. go he's got to stretch over and <coughs> he'll be able to reach this and he knows red color needed that's all so whether it's been a 64 pretty break or a controlled break he's almost at the point where it's winning in the frame once again I don't think he hit it as well as he could have done 65 the side of the pocket but does it really matter? don't think it does. As long as he pots this next black. Frame ball. Oh, miles. Absolute mile away. It was only 65. Yeah, I mean, it's the kind of shot there's a tendency to miss it on the thick side if you're holding for the next red. But when you don't need the next red, it makes it all the more disappointing, really. Real struggling break, not yet one in the frame. Yes, the, in the last frame, the, the contribution, that 68, was very good. But even what? so, he hasn't looked confident all evening, Dings and we. He really has struggled. And he's given Mark Williams a half chance here to steal this fourth frame. He's got to be careful, Mike, hasn't he, with the points. He can't afford to take anything but blacks and one pink. 57 points of difference. Eight. 59 on, he can afford one pink and the rest blacks. That will not be straightforward from here because he's taking the pink that he needs now nine that's the awkward red yeah at least he's a left hander so okay. it'll be in his range 15 it would be a mighty good clearance this Take the other one's quite difficult as well, not so much the pot, but just to play it, such a way to land on the black. Might just play on the left hand red now, come in behind it. Oh, he's missed the black. Mark Williams, 16, Frank conceded, Frank well, that disgusted win. that he missed the black, simple black really, off the spot, that he's conceded the train. Uh, a little bit annoyed at himself, but what it means is that Ding Jun is back in this. He was 2-0 behind, it's now two apiece.
Well, it's the third day's play, third week's play, I should say, in this year's PartyCasino.com Premier League. And again, as we've seen earlier on, Sean Murphy, well, he lost 4-2 to Marco Fu. And Ding Junhui has done well to get back into this match 2 all. Though Mark Williams will be disappointed missing that last black off the spot there. And as we've seen before, it's to come, still to come, Neil Robertson versus Mark Selby. Frame five. Ding Jun Wee to break. So Ding gets us underway then in the fifth frame of six. And I'm sure he will be delighted to be back in this. It's game on. Obviously, it was an attempted pot, but he's left the same red on to the centre pocket. He's overcut it. Well, just thinking that Mark's got a choice here. This is a quite straight one, but he does like to drop shots in. Top spin. Maybe a two cushion attempt here. Oh, that's amazing. Wow. He hit the wrong side of that. Ding Jun Wee. Wasn't even four. straight. Well, th this wasn't quite straight, and I'm quite staggered that went in off. Yes, nicely done. Oh, good pop there. I thought he might just try to chip that in. One. Too far for the brown, but he's on the green. Well, he's just checking to see if this back red goes to the left corner. And uh, we'll see with this positional shot. Although he has played on that red, he's left that cue ball near to that side cushion. Four. Not nice cueing. Yes, it goes, but again, can he avoid the black? The red is not guaranteed. He might just run into the black here, actually. Well, in trying to get position on the black, Ding, we? he missed Four. the red by a mile. Wasn't easy, though, off that side cushion. Mm, but he has left one. Yeah, it was a tricky shot, I agree. The black was a distraction. One. Well, this is a, a possible chance for Mark to go into these. and have to, he might just wait one, but a lot of players would certainly be driving into the pack here, trying to spread them far and wide. Uh, that's beautifully played. That really is good. And he played it with a bit of method. He didn't just go into them. Eight. Nicely done. Yeah, terrific, with a lot of action on the white. Nine. And uh, no, he's only two apiece, but he wants to steady the ship here. 2-0 the lead. He was looking pretty strong in this match. And he wants another victory. His first victory was against Mark Selby a couple of weeks ago in Plymouth. Four frames to two. Can he get another one this evening? Yeah, went up for one of his backup reds there. Sixteen. Nothing in the pack that he could land behind. Saving one of them. 17. Well, I hope he's not gone too far because he decided to try and nudge that red off the cushion and I think he snooped 21. himself on the one there in the middle pocket. Still has this one, though. Nicely done. He used the 22. second red to get onto the black. That was beautiful. And it was good temperament, wasn't it, Mike? Because the fact is, the shot that he played was a bit of a mistake to play the cannon, which he missed. Thought he had the reserve red, but he just got down and potted the next ball and didn't let him, his mind wander. 29. That's why he's been such a great player. 30. Keeps it simple. 
And he's got a fine temperament. I think sometimes the shot clock helps, actually. It, if he'd have had uh, as much time as he'd wanted, he probably would have looked up and said, you know, what, what have I done there? But you just have to get on with it, don't you? No time to think about what has gone wrong. 38. True. Now, will he go into the pack here, or will he go down for that red near the left centre? Well. He's tried the... Sorry, Neil. He's just tried the little cannon there, hasn't he? Tried to flick one out, and again, he's got the back up red, hasn't he? So, again, it's clever thinking. 45. Don't want to get stuck in the back of the four reds, which you can do. Forty-six. Well, he's on the yellow here. I can't see the brown. The next red, not absolutely straightforward either. I think the four reds are tied up in the middle of the table, so it's actually one of the other ones. Now this is, might be one of Mark Williams' shots where he plays forty-eight, slightly overstretching. He can just get to it. And there's an example of him keeping it simple. He has gone a little short, though, unfortunately. So this is just about end of break. You always say that slightly hesitantly with Mark, but... Yeah, I just wonder, Neil, a few shots back when he had the opportunity to just split the four reds off the black, he chose to play at a, a lighter pace. I thought that might have been a chance to get those reds open then. Mark Williams, 49. Yeah, he's, uh, he's not won the frame, but... At least he's played a good safety shot. He's put the yellow on the side cushion. And he's in the box seat. 49. Just needs to go beyond the brown. Well, he's caught it. I think we might see Mark play a safety here. Well, he's electing to open up these four reds. That's surprising me. Hoping it's going to be on the yellow. Now then, is it there? What a shot. Oh. Well. And it's the wrong angle. Foul and a miss. Mark Williams, four. That will go back. Back. Well, doing okay at the moment. Because the 67 on the table is only 45 in the frame. Okay, Mark. He'll play the same shot again, but he doesn't want to hit these too hard because he could leave one on. Just the slight adjustment. Looks better this time. Well, that's an excellent shot. Yeah, played it well enough. Could be back over that side of the table again, though, in somewhere on the left, maybe somewhere down behind the yellow. It's a possibility. Time out. He's got a choice here, Mike, hasn't he? He could play glancing off the red that he's close to or try and pop the red into the left corner that's just below the, those two reds. Yeah, that's why he's got the rest out, because obviously I thought Dinger got that tight to the red, but it's pretty obvious that this um, red wool pot... He's overcut it. But he's got the cue ball okay. on that side of the table. So he's played twofold there. Yeah, it's a good shot, isn't it? It's hard to imagine how he could have left it on playing it in that direction, and he hasn't. Now, Ding is just looking, is there anything that will pot? I don't know. Maybe the red actually does pot to the right corner, so I don't think he's got any choice but to go for this. He can see enough of it. It looks like it does pass. Yeah, the red. He needs cover. Well, he's got cover to the left-hand side of the table, but not the right-hand side. No, but I'll tell you what, when you've got a lead of 45, you don't really want to be playing these. These reds in the right corner, Mark knows in the back of his mind. It's the kind of shot you'd rather play when you're a few behind than a few in front. Yeah, he's got to go for this, though. Oh, hello. Well, I think the pressure's on him on one. that shot. He knew it different mentality when you're a few in front you, like 
Mike said he knew he had to go for it, but he didn't really want to play it. What about this? This will really drive the point home if this goes in. Mark Williams is one. still alive. Surprised at that. I thought he might have just laid the snooker in behind the black. He's given Ding a bit of a lifeline here. One. I know, yes, there's a lot to do. Hang on. Well, he's angled himself. He's played that with a lot of topspin to try and get the cue ball beyond the middle pocket. And what has he done? He's angled himself. Yeah, I mean, hey, you see that in exhibitions, that sort of shot. There's an awful lot of risk attached to it. I mean, you've got an idea where the cue ball's going to go. It's going to almost banana back towards Ooh, the res. But eight. as you saw, it could go absolutely anywhere. And he hasn't played a good safety. This red is on. <laughs> Needs a nice kiss, though, on something. Well, it's awkward on the brown. He might just lay in behind the yellow here. That is the shot. Well, he's 39 the lead. The brown would make it 43, actually. So just done the calculations. Just rechecking that. Yeah, 50 remaining only for Mark, of course, once he comes away from the table, then Ding has only got two reds and colours left to play with. He's taking a timeout, so no, he's got the choice between the two shots that Mike said. Potting the brown would make it 43. I think I'd be inclined to roll him behind the yellow if, if he's got awkward queuing anyway. Yeah, me too, because Ding, you know, the, the reds are split, aren't they? He's got to get them safe if he comes off a couple of cushions. I mean, he could chip the blue into the middle, but I think behind the yellow, it's got to be the shot, really. Uh, Mark Williams already has taken four timeouts, Ding only one. Yeah, it's all based around the fact that he can't really cue the brown. If he could get to the brown, I think he'd play it. But he's now looking at the shot that he would leave Ding in behind that yellow. He's going to go one cushion should he play it, but he's looking at the brown again. I think once you've looked at a shot this long, Usually the safety shot is the right one. I think if he potted the brown to make it 44 Mark the lead and won. not 43, then he would have taken it on. And he's got to hit this. If he misses it, there is 43 in it, but unfortunately it won't help his chances. So this is two cushions. I think he's gone a little wide, has he? Has he left the red to the middle? I think he has. It was difficult to get them safe, so in the end, I think Mark Williams has played the correct shot. This is frame ball. One. This to really make sure then. He's not having much success with that won. middle pocket. So Ding requires two snookers. Well played. <laughs> well, he's got the snooker behind the blue. Thing, of course, has to get the safe. And he's left it to the corner. That is the end of frame now. One. This end of the body shot. Sure. Oh, hang on. Is it in the middle? <laughs> yes, and the frame concession Mark from Ding Zhongwei. Well, Ding did have a few chances in the fifth frame. He couldn't take them. But Mark Williams has steadied the ship. He now leads by three frames to two.
welcome back then to Preston. And uh, well, we saw Marco Fo win 4 2 against Sean Murphy earlier this evening. In the second match, we have Mark Williams 3 2 ahead, looking for his second victory in this Premier League. And again, well, what a match to come. The world number one world champion, Neil Robertson, against the Masters champion, Mark Selby. Final frame of this match Mark Williams to break. So Mark gets underway then in the final frame, the sixth frame. And uh, well if he can gain a victory here, he will go to the top of the league with four points. Ding fighting to get a point out of this one. And he needs it badly, of course, that uh, bad loss a couple of weeks ago to Sean Murphy, 5-1. He really needs to try and get something out of this match, but he has been struggling. should have taken that one on really he played a good solid safety but he chose to but he's left uh, Mark the same red on just pop this in and he'll be on the black not this time that was a chance yeah and the double kiss has uh, enabled Ding to pop this red that's what you need really it's almost like a decider same thing it is the last frame of this match and you just want to get in first Ding's now got that chance Side of the blue. And what has he got? Form tonight has been patchy. Uh, played reasonably, 68 and 65 in consecutive frames, but not quite his normal fluent best. Yeah, and I just think that he decided to go into them. Oh, wow! Uh, well, he didn't catch the pink full ball. He had a glance in blow. Things that can always one. happen. Mark Williams. Yeah, five. I mean, he might consider himself unlucky, but it was a poor shot not to actually make any contact with the red, just a full ball on the pink there. So hitting it half ball was a, an error. I was about to say, Neil, actually, that if Ding comes out of this three all, it'll probably feel like a win. <coughs> oh, Mark played a pretty telling safety. Only thing in Ding's favour, the pack are tightly grouped, so he'll play just off one cushion here, just to nestle into them. Nice pace. Is it touching? Touching ball. It is. Makes it much easier, of course, for the player just to put the white anywhere on the table. Behind the yellow again on the back cushion, I would feel... Well, he's left... Well, you can see the reds this time. Just has to avoid the black. And Mark's got the same problem. Doesn't want to hit it this too thick, this safety shot, because he'll go into the black himself. Played it with a, a little bit of left hand side to avoid that, but it's a, a serious misjudgment that he's made. Playing with left hand side, check side, just makes it difficult to get the cue ball up the table. It stops the cue ball. And Dink can get to this red. Just had a little bit of angle to get that cue ball away from the pocket. One. Okay, he's the wrong side of the blue, but he should be able to negotiate the, the bulk uh, colours here. Mm. 
Nicely done. Not quite the perfect angle. <laughs> My turn. I just wonder if you can come through Six. for the pink here. If not, you probably have to go back for the blue. Don't know whether you can just glance off the uh, side of the pack. Well, it's, it's just off straight, this red. And he's heading towards the pack. Timeout. He's asked for a timeout because he knows this could be a key shot in the frame. He's looking at what Mike said, if he can get on that. Looks a bit tight, doesn't it, as to whether he can. Yeah, just to wonder how straight that red is to the opposite corner. He's just got a slight angle on it. It's not dead straight. Yeah, well, I think he can get through to the pink there if it pops. So does he. Yeah, it's a bit tight, isn't Seven. it? It's one of these, when you're right behind it, perhaps, you might even have to play with a little touch of right-hand side to make the angle a little more in his favour. And referee Paul Collier having a close look at this, make sure he doesn't hit the red first. Well, I think that was OK. Yes, he put the pink in the left-hand side of the pocket as well. It was done very well. Pink spot not available, so it goes on to the black. 13. It's very crowded, though, at this end. Yeah, I think the pink actually pots in the same pocket, doesn't it, as you can see. Didn't really want to play. I don't Fourteen. think he played on the black, put it that way, because the black is no good to him. If it goes in, it goes behind its own spot. I think he played to screw back and get on the pink into the same pocket there. And he's stretching over the pack. If he takes this on, it's not guaranteed. Time out between Time out. this, isn't it? It's got to be, because we're at the nitty-gritty now. Well, he can get to the pink, but it wasn't exactly what he was looking for. The black is no good to him. As I say, all the spots are covered, so the black would just tie up the pink and black. He's used his, uh, a couple of timeouts in this frame. As Ding. This is a big shot. No, oh, that's beautiful. That's a beautiful shot. Well, what a touch that was. Still has to remove a couple of reds here to really open things up at this end of the table. Yeah, that last shot was absolutely superb, Mike, wasn't it? That's well, real touch with the rest. Why well, has he played on the black? It's going to go behind the black spot. I think, though, at least this time, it will um, be potable, the black, but earlier on, I think there were a couple of reds in the way. I just thought that he might have gone down for the blue for one, actually left the pink open, but as you say, the black is still potable, the pink won't be now. <laughs> but the pink that he played for the rest, well, that was, what a touch, that was superb. Actually, this will work out OK, because if he just holds the white where the red is, then he can just nudge the pink out the way, once pot in the black. 28. So it's me that has to get 29. up to speed. he pushed it too far does that red go well it's it's fairly tight 36 feeling that, that put it this way that the pink that he knocked in beautifully with the rest drifted slightly from left to right as he's watching so i think it might go he doesn't think so playing safe well that was a pity because he got the he played very well to get 36. this uh, well the center of the table open 36 there from ding good safety It'd love to have won the frame at that visit, though. And that's a good return from Mark Williams. What a great shot. <laughs> the sixth frame could still go either way. Mark Williams already guaranteed one point out of this match. Can he get two? Ding hanging on here to try and gain his first point in this year's Premier League. Well, that 
was a much better shot than it looked. Always difficult with the red very close to the cushion to play that thing safely. That's a good, very good shot. Yeah, I just think there's one that the red that's halfway down the table, the, well, between the right of the pink spot, that might be available. It goes. And I think that Ding can just about avoid everything here with the cue ball. He might be taking this on. Just caught it on the thin side, but he's got a reasonable cue ball. Well, I think that if Mark can get to that red on the left, he might consider taking it on. Depends whether he feels he can get on the colour. I suppose if it does go wrong, then it's the end of the frame, so opting for the safety. Well, he only just avoided the middle pocket. Nicely done. Got that same red is on for Mike Williams. Again, the priority was the safety shot. If the red goes in, it's a bonus. You can lay him behind the colour. Although he's caught the brown there, the red over the right corner is covered. Foul. Well, it had to be thin, thinner than that. Ding and we he's pushed the red to the corner. Well, he certainly has. I wonder if we see the shot again. Um, the red's just going close to the pocket as to whether Ding can get to it. I think he can. Crucially, he can get to that red. And just thinking back, Neil, let's not forget that Mike Williams led 2 0 here. And if he comes out of this, he finishes 3 1. I do feel that he's missed a chance. Indeed. The other side of the coin is that you've got someone like Ding who's struggled in his opening match and not played at his best tonight. If he can grind out a, some sort of a result and get a point, when they all get totted up you know it, it could be enough to see him through to the playoffs Eight. at the end of November he can't always play well but a point here would be uh, pretty satisfactory I would say still got a bit of work to do I mean those no. reds are a bit tangled up and you might have to go into a couple of them here just to keep the break alive yes he's got a perfect angle to do that Well, he took the one out, but that's okay. One still goes to this right corner. Fifteen. Sixteen. Now, still a couple of reds with colours needed here. As we've just mentioned, if he comes out of this three all, well, he'll be highly delighted. It's looking that way now. Hasn't played at his best this evening, but he's just stuck in there. Like I say, Mark Williams did have a chance at 2 0 to really take hold of this match, but he didn't do. Still needs one more red, and he's finished the wrong side of the blue. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the last thing he wants to do is take on one of the reds near a cushion. So, if it was just a couple of inches shorter here, and uh, this side time of the blue, he'd be absolutely fine. He's, okay. I think it's worth taking his final time out that he's allowed. Time out. And. Uh, I was warned by Paul Collier that they've not allowed another one in this frame of match. 
but this is the well, the last shot that he's got to really give some thought to. Yes, of course, it's the last frame, as Neil Neil is explaining there. He's only allowed three timeouts in one frame, although he did would have had one left, actually, but he's had three in this frame. While well, he's trying to get round for that red into the centre pocket. <laughs> he could have probably got there just <laughs> by stunning the, the blue in plain ball and leaving it there. Nine. It might cut in, though. Yeah, he was trying to urge the cue ball on there. This is frame ball. But it's thin. Well done. 30. Well, again, you know, both players haven't played at the best this evening, but Ding Shun Wee is just stuck in there. The pink to make sure. Mark Williams will be disappointed. He led 2 0. He was looking pretty strong. 36. He led 3 2. It's going to finish up three all. Now is there a handshake or will he play on? Yes, yes there is a handshake there. So, I say at one stage, Mark Williams was looking very good indeed to take hold of this match, but it didn't happen. Ding Jun Wee came back very strongly indeed. It finished Ding Jun Wee three, Mark Williams three. Welcome back to the PartyCasino.com Snooker Premier League. Three matches for you tonight. We started at a slightly earlier time of 6pm and it featured former world champion Sean Murphy up against Marco Fu. As you can see, Marco Fu won that one four frames to two. Next up, we had the UK champion against the China Open champion Mark Williams and Ding Junhui. Honours equal there, three all. And uh, coming up, the world champion, world number one, world open champion, the brilliant Neil Robertson up against the current Masters champion, the brilliant Mark Selby. That draw, though, for Mark Williams and for Ding Junhui. Uh, that's what he does to the league table. Mark's still up there. Ding as well. Ding still without a win. But look, so is Ronnie, so is Mark, and so is Neil. It's still so early yet. Uh, I'm joined by Mark Williams now. Mark, you saw, you led 2-0 on that and also 3-2. Do you think you threw away the points in that one? Um, no, I don't think so. I think 3 all was a fair result, really. I think both of us played pretty poorly and... Uh, I don't think any of us deserve to win. Um, Ding was obviously coming back uh, on the back of a hammer in his last match in the Premier League was against uh, Sean Murphy, lost 5-1. When you're playing a player like that, do you rather play players that in their last game got a beating or would you rather play someone that's on form? Does it make a difference? Do you think they're going to try harder because they're more desperate for the points? No, I don't think so. I think in this league, I mean, it doesn't matter who you play, when you play, and there's, there's all top-class players in there. It's going to be tough. Uh, whoever you play and taking a 2 nil lead, although it sounds good, um, you know, you still still aren't to win the match, really. I mean, chances are they can win two or three in a matter of half an hour themselves. So, two 0 is, is a nice lead, but it's not a kind of lead that you think I've thrown a match away. I get the feeling that when you're playing nowadays, Mark, you're enjoying it a lot more because you've been there, done it, and seen it. You're two times world champion. You've been number one in the world. You've sort of done everything. Um, are you enjoying it more out there? Is it more relaxed? Is it easier for you to play the game? Yeah, I'm certainly enjoying it. I mean, uh, you know, even though none of us played well, I was still enjoying it out there, and it was enjoyable trying to work out what angles the cushions was going to come off sometimes. But, you know, I stuck in there, and, and three all, I mean, I'm happy with that, really. Um, and is it too early yet to predict you going through to finals weekend? Are you looking at that when you look at the league table? Do you think, well, I could make it now? Last four is a definite possibility. Too early. Too, even now, Mark? Even for me, too early. If, I, if I'm in the semi final and qualify, brilliant. But I'm just enjoying it and do the best I can. I'm not going to say. You know, I could get the semi-finals because I could probably lose every other every game left. So I'm just going to plod along and see if I can get enough points to get, make it to the semis. Well, they're all tough matches. Do you know your next opponent needs next week? No idea. You've got Neil Robertson, world champion, world number one, world open champion. Yeah, there's um, nothing left. He won really. I think <laughs> I think he holds everything at the minute, and he's playing uh, you know probably the best out of anyone at the minute. Him and O'Sullivan. So obviously it's a tough game, but I'm looking forward to it. It's just just a pleasure to be back in the league, really. Well, I for one am pleased you. I'm a big fan of yours. A uh, good win, a uh, good result, I should say. A point well earned. Mark Williams, everyone. Well done, Mark.
Okay, listen, we're going to have a, a very, very quick break, but don't go anywhere. You'll be mad to turn over now. When we come back, the world champion and world number one in action right here in the Premier League. <laughs> Welcome back to the PikeCasino.com Premier League Snooker. Our next match and our last one of the evening features these two players. World number one and world champion Neil Robertson against the Masters champion Mark Selby. And let's have a quick reminder of the league table and where these players currently sit. Look at that. Six and seven. Something tells me that won't be the case come finals weekend. Right, on with the show. Let's meet the players. And first up, it's the Jester from Leicester. I thought you were going to have to get the extension out and play a few shots from up there. Hey, listen, good to see you. Uh, I'm a big, big fan of yours. In my eyes, you're without doubt a future world champion. But last week, or last time you played in the Premier League, you got stuffed 4-2. What happened? Well, you're right, I did get stuffed. I mean, I started off great, won the first two frames. I don't think Mark really scored a point. And then after that, he'd done the same to me. But obviously, like I say, the Premier League this year is probably the best I've played in mm. over the late years when I've watched it and when I played in it two years ago. So obviously every match is going to be tough and that can always happen. Um, they're always tough. It doesn't come much tougher than tonight's opponent, does it? World number one, world champion, obviously the man in form. He's just recently won the World Open as well. Yeah, it's going to be a really tough match. Like you say, the rankings don't lie. He's probably the best player in the world at the moment. So it's going to be a tough game, but really looking forward to it. Is there extra motivation from your point of view when you're playing the current world champion? Is it just another game of snooker for you tonight? Or from your point of view, is there something to prove? No, not really. I mean, it is just another game of snooker, but every match I go into, I just play to win. So tonight's not going to be any different just because it's Neil and he's world champion and world's number one. It's always nice to take a scalp, isn't it? World champion, gone. Yeah, it'd be nice, yeah. It'd be nice. OK, listen, uh, for the time being, best of luck tonight. The brilliant Mark Selby, everyone. Thanks, Mark. And for the first time in this season's Premier League, it's time to meet the world champion. Neil Robertson, world champion, world number one, newly crowned world open champion, but you're currently sitting bottom of the Premier League, Neil. <laughs> That's actually uh, nothing uh, different to me. I think uh, my first year in the Premier League, I finished bottom, and last year I was second from bottom. So, um, yeah, it's, it's nothing too different for me at the moment. All jokes aside, what's it like standing up there and being introduced as the world champion and world number one? And also, what's, from your point of view, more important, world number one or world champion? Um, whew, I don't know. Well, probably, I probably 
first thought maybe world number one, I think, because that you know, proves you've been really consistent over two years. But obviously when I won the world championship, I was saying that was more important. And then obviously, you know, with the great result last week, put me to number one. So I'm just um, very lucky to, to hold both of those titles at the moment. Have you noticed since you've become world champion, have you noticed that more people have, have raised their game? You're getting everyone's A game because you're the man everyone wants to be. Um, I was probably a little too early in the season to um, tell that yet, but uh, yeah, you know, obviously playing in the Premier League and, and someone as good as Mark, you know, obviously it's going to be just you know really tough every week whoever you play. So um, yeah, I think you know Mark doesn't really have anything to prove. He's he's twice Masters champion, so um, you know he's a top top player. So uh, yeah, it's just what you get every week in the Premier League. Now we've got the shot clock obviously in the Premier League uh, that's not in any other um, snooker competition. That obviously. Um, I wouldn't say affects your game, but alters your game because sometimes we see you running around the table to avoid timeouts. Um, from your point of view, do you still think you've got a shot at the title? Um, I don't know. We have to see. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, I won't be running around like a headless chicken <laughs> like I usually do. And you know, just got to use your timeouts whenever you have to. You know, usually I, I play a match and I've got four left, so you know, you just got to use them whenever you can. And uh, yeah, hopefully this year I can. Uh, position myself better than last year. Okay, best of luck, ladies and gentlemen, the world champion. Thank you. <laughs> Let's hand over to our boys in the box, Neil Folds, and first up, the voice of snooker, the brilliant Clive Everton. It's a tail, you won, Neil. The third and last match of the evening in this uh, Preston Snooker Fest the world champion versus the Masters champion. Neil Robertson also world number one because uh, the ranking system has been changed instead of <laughs> an annual revision at the end of each season it's a rolling system where players uh, drop points as uh, the same tournament comes round again the first frame Neil Robertson to break I thought you said you wanted a break yeah I said he ah, break you want you to break well, somebody's going to break anyway. First frame, Mark Selby to break. Why do I have to break? <laughs> Mark Selby currently ninth in the world rankings. <laughs> Well, very fleetingly, we saw a time foul there, but I, I don't think that really applies because uh, it hadn't really been sorted out who was, who was actually going to break off. Just rattling in the jaws, that one. Well, that as well from shorter range. Hmm. Well, that was nowhere near. Funny old uh, career, really, isn't it? He's uh, he's done so well, Neil Robertson. He's won six ranking tournaments in no time but as he mentioned in his interview he's had absolutely no form in this Premier League whatsoever bottom and second bottom and hardly won a match along the way it's the only challenge that he's been unsuccessful in so far in his career one Mark Selby was runner-up to Ronnie O'Sullivan in the Premier League two years ago. Yeah, and was probably a little unlucky not to be invited back last year, I felt, based on that performance, which going into the final, a lot of people thought he could have beaten Ronnie because he seemed to almost adapt his game to play a little quicker. But he wasn't involved last year. Only no. seven players can be invited uh, into the league. And uh, the top four go into the playoffs, which again will be at Hopton on Sea at the Potter's Leisure Centre. 
in the uh, last weekend of November. 14. Mark Selby, 14. Not the type of pot Selby normally misses. <laughs> At least Robertson has given himself a much better chance of playing well here at Preston this year than he did in the league last year. He completely underestimated the time it would take him to get from Cambridge to here. And uh, eight. he arrived with only three or four minutes to spare, went straight on against John Higgins and uh, Nine. played pretty poorly. He's pretty laid back. I've seen him turn up quite close to the side of the match before, actually. But uh, he takes most things in his stride. Not the ideal preparation, I agree. But, uh, you know, his story is a really successful one. 16. I mentioned at the beginning of the show tonight that he came over 10 or 11 years ago, just 500 quid in his pocket. Nothing else really to show for it, except for... a some snookering ability 17 but uh, you know he's he's proved that as an overseas player you can get there <coughs> it's obviously more difficult for the overseas players because they're away from friends and family because the circuit is based pretty squarely in Britain, although th that is starting to alter. Full ranking tournaments in China, two of them, and uh, 25. Six minor ranking events in Europe this year, th including one this weekend in Bruges. These players have been discussing backstage how they're going to get there in time to play on Saturday morning. Well, it was uh, always yeah, going to be a natural to get on to the next red, but there was some degree of difficulty about the pot. Here it is. Just overcut this. Yeah, I think the players enjoy having One. that to think about. OK, they're busy and a lot of the players will be travelling tonight to get themselves ready for their flights. It's a nice problem to have, one that maybe they haven't had for quite some time. Well, has that gone far enough? Well, he's quickly down as if he can get to this. Yep, just about. Nine. I expect the standard of this match to pick up. It's been a scrappy start, and I wonder if that's because... Uh, the players have been hanging about a long time backstage before starting the match around about 5 to 10. 14. There's nothing like going to a venue knowing that you're going to start smack on half past 7 or what have you. 15. But as I say, I think they'll soon settle into it. Yes, and uh, if he could uh, disturb a few reds here, then that would certainly help him to settle into this because I think he'll screw into the pink. There is a red at the bottom which may pot. So a little cannon. And he played it really well, I think. And that he could have played it with more pace and he may have lost the cue ball to a side cushion or even into the 20. one of the corner pockets. So that was beautifully judged. Yeah, absolutely perfect.
26. Twenty-seven. Thirty-four. Now, just a slight problem here. Don't think he can avoid the cannon into the red and the pink especially with that sort of queuing over the other red. So position not guaranteed. Got to concentrate on the pot as well. Well, he'd be reasonably happy with 35. that. I mean, he's the wrong side of the blue. The thin cut on the pink's not assured either. So I think he's going to roll in the blue and leave himself mid to long range on the next red. Still work to be done. Well, he's just composing himself for this next red. 40. Missable. But we'll probably win in the frame should he get it. 41. Oh, no. It's a good part as it happens. Slightly awkward again. With that queuing, he can't do anything more than drop this in. Thirty-five in front, so <laughs> this is frame ball. Forty-six. Forty-seven. So that puts Robertson from one to two snookers needed. 53. Mark Selby, 53. And the frame. Robertson concedes. Selby leads by a frame to nil. In the last match of the evening, Mark Selby leads Neil Robertson by a frame to nil. Previously, Mark Fu beat Sean Murphy 4-2, and Ding Junhui and Mark Williams played out a three-all draw. Okay. The second frame, Neil Robertson to break. I'm pretty sure Selby intended to have the cue ball tighter to the cushion than that. Yes, it's uh, a half chance as it happens, which didn't seem likely. Pretty innocuous looking safety shot he was left with there, Mark. Nicely done. One. Especially because of the... Uh, five second warning which can put players off seven Thank <laughs> you. 
Neil Robertson, seven. Basic shot. Yeah, lacklustre. I wonder if any chance he'll get a bit of a reaction from this heroics at the weekend. Can happen, you know, in this game. When you, you think you're going to play well and your confidence is high, sometimes it doesn't quite happen. Early days, though, but it was a basic shot, like you say. Yes, Robertson coming here direct from winning the £100,000 first prize in the World Open in Glasgow, beating Ronnie O'Sullivan 5-1 in the final. <laughs> well, he's good, but he's not that good. The flukes are red. One. Yeah, and he's got to get right in behind the colour there because it's the, the red that he fluked. Playing to just drop in behind this. That's pretty Neil well Robertson judged. One. Just enough left of centre striking to avoid the pink. The side spin widening the angle off the side cushion. May not get very far here without uh, a re-rack. Well, Mark Selby is just giving him a long hard look, plenty of eye contact. It's almost a, just a question of getting the other player's eye line, isn't it? Getting into his eyes and say, do you want to re-rack? The points don't really matter. I don't think eight plays zero. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, 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 Selby offered Robertson yeah, on, and Robertson refused. And now Robertson offered Selby and... Uh, do you want to re-rack here? Selby's offered Robertson okay. and <laughs> he's refused. So, so finally, it is going to be a re rack as uh, seemed inevitable before that uh, little bit of by-play. Yeah, and it ended up with Paul Collier saying, look, you're going to have a re rack or not, you know, and uh, I think uh, they both said yes. They're playing silly beggars, weren't they? But there you are. They, they like to enjoy themselves, these two, I must say. You know, snooker's a, a serious business, a lot of money at stake, but... I do like the, the way that these two play, and, and Mark is a jester from Leicester, as they call him. They're both fun, but I tell you what, they've both got a bit of steel about them, haven't they, these two? They really do. Oh, yes, and um, the question of enjoying it, I, I think players play better if they enjoy it, if, if it all becomes a chore and okay. rather too serious, real life and death. Yeah, Robertson to Brad. They don't play as well. problem with that though Clive is that uh, how much can you enjoy getting thumped in a match really not very much <laughs> and that happens to the best of them that was a very tough shot having to elevate the butt of the queue to get the necessary backspin to get round behind the back of the black and having missed the red it was a matter of chance where the cue ball was going to finish well that's the second basic shot that Robertson has missed in this frame Just thinking that as a snooker player and, and someone that you know, played in tournaments for many years, uh, in Neil's case, of course, winning at the weekend. I wonder if he's had much practice since. Probably not going to want to have had a game on Monday or Tuesday. Probably still celebrating. May have hit a few balls yesterday. Might not be quite at his absolute best at this early stage of a match. One. That's a good point, Neil. And uh, also, Neil Robertson was telling me backstage that. Uh, 
he's been busy lately moving his girlfriend and um, their four month old son Alexander across to Cambridge four. getting to settle in he says that he's just been competing or um, Five. domestically involved he hasn't practiced much at all which makes his win last week even better It's a shaky old start, this. That'll be five. <coughs> Do you think they've gone a bit flat, Neil, with the long wait backstage? I guess so, it's possible. Um, snooker players are slightly more used to the roll-on, roll-off system, but, you know, you Quite. think about Wimbledon tennis, where... Sometimes you have to wait two days for a match if it rains. It's just the way it has to be. But players have to get used to it, don't they? It doesn't rain very often at snooker matches. <laughs> Five. It did in the 1974 World Championship in Manchester. The, the roof started to leak. The only time when rain has stopped play at snooker. Six. Lots of power here, and it was very difficult to see him really get through them. He made a very good effort of it, though. Ten. Lots of topspin. But he had a huge and weighty pack to get the cue ball through. <laughs> Neil Robertson, ten. Hmm, well, didn't think much of that shot, because this is... Uh, Got potential of being a re rack unless someone plays something positive. Hopefully, Mark will play a, a shot here like that. That's all right. The brown is on the black spot, of course, because um, its own spot is covered by the yellow. Well, I think he's looking at maybe some sort of a plant, but the cue ball will be back on uh, the black cushion, I think. That's the, the most important part of the shot. He's left a red available top left, which he didn't really bargain on. <coughs> well, this is looks horribly straight for my liking. There may be a very slight angle, but not much. Uh, that distance between cue ball and object ball. And that was always going to be the problem, really. Either follow through and off or One. hit the jaws of the pocket. Just no real angle on this. It's a good part, but I'm not sure I know what he played on. I think it was one of those that uh, he didn't really sure. care whether it went in or not. The next shot was going to be... It was going to be safe where he left the cue ball. Mark Salby, three. And uh, it was an easy safety once he potted the yellow. Well, that's an attacking shot, and looking at this, it doesn't seem that easy for Mark to get back in, into a safe position from here. The beauty of it was the cue ball being pretty tight on the cushion.
Well, it's gone tactical, but you do feel that with the Reds in open play, you know, one chance should lead to a frame-winning opportunity. Often when it gets tactical, the Reds go on a, on a cushion. It's not really happened. Time out. We're hearing a lot of these bleeps because the players are having to think about their next shot. So Selby takes his first time out. Well, the problem is he just can't get into the cue ball to leave it. He'd like it to be left roughly where it is now, but the red on the left, he can't quite stun it because he's so close to the cushion. He can only play it with topspin. It's hard to see an easy safety shot here, and uh, hence it's taking so long. He's trying to just to find a way of getting something on the ball, but topspin, queuing down like this. Well, it's not a bad effort, but I think his left one looks like one thin cut to the right middle. May not be easy to get prime position though from a thin cut. Hit and hope, but one. not bad. Sometimes you have to play him like that. Six. Seven. Thirteen. Mm, that was untidy, really, to go into that red. Played around the back of it and in behind it, I think. Eighteen. Still parts, but it was a uh, pretty poor positional shot, really. Nineteen. Well, it always looked into me, but it uh, it struggled. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. <coughs> Unassisted by either pink or black so far. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Thirty-three. Thirty-four. Just 
playing a little screw shot here. The frame is not quite over. Well, that looks not bad. Played to just avoid that red, and that's what he achieved. Got a lead of 41 39. points. He needs a red and a colour to secure the frame without Mark coming back to the table and getting snookers. Forty. With that sort of queuing, couldn't get any nearer the blue than this. It's frame ball. In that, it leaves Selby needing a snooker that uh, he's 45. not going to get a chance to play for. Well, this is a bit 46. better. He started shakily bit of a reaction lots of pats on the back no doubt as the last few days he's back to business tonight and it's not always easy to just switch back on I'm sure he's feeling on top of the world about his game overall and, and this has been a, a nice little break 14 he's never been straightforward with the high colors never really on pink or black have not been there 50 Fifty-five. Fifty-seven. Sixty. May have intended to leave uh, this brown straight that he can so that he can screw back into the pink to develop it, but he didn't leave it straight. Sixty-four. Sixty-nine. A break of sixty-nine, unassisted by either pink or black, enables Neil Robertson to win the second frame and level the match at one all. Neil Robertson, the world champion, and Mark Selby, the Masters champion, are one all. Four frames to go in the last match of the evening. Frame three, Mark Selby to break. Hit it absolutely full, so I conclude that that was a safety. Well, that was attacking, pushing one red right into the pack like that. Never quite know where they're going to finish.
these two are quite similar in some ways, aren't they, Clive? When you think about it, We've both been on the tour quite a long time. Didn't make anything like an immediate impact. You saw go back many years, the likes of John Higgins and Ronnie O'Sullivan. They were we knew straight away they were going to be the real deal. But these two were on the tour a long time before it all started to click. Well, Salby in particular, because uh, he used to have a, a very long cue action, even for quite short range soft shots. And his rise up the rankings follows his adoption of a much more compact style. <coughs> yeah, I agree. I, I remember when he first was on the tour, it really was a. People used to say, hey, well, hang on, he's a good player, this kid, but have you seen the way he hits the ball and he had a ridiculous long backswing? And on these cloths, well, you can only decelerate through the ball with that kind of a cue action, but he's got it all sorted out. And uh, everything else about him is there for all to see. Twice a win over the Masters. As for Neil, he, I think he actually went off the tour after a couple of years when he first came over. Showed promise, but that was all. I didn't really think, as good as he was then, that he would be a world number one. Amazing. An ultra-fine contact, that. And it needed to be. And on the subject of Neil being world number one, I actually quite like the way they're doing it now, updating the rankings three times a season. Still over two years, isn't it? Because they're just taking away tournaments from the start of the season two years ago. So it's still over a couple of years. Foul. I'm a miss. Mark Salby four. Well, that wasn't even ultra thin. I guess the interesting thing about how the rankings are going to go this year is it's going to be a bit, a bit of a clamour for places in the 16 when you really want to be there, which is just before you have to qualify for the Crucible. That's where it's going to be very interesting for all concerned. Well, strictly speaking, Neil Robertson is the only player who's absolutely certain to be at the Crucible because he'll be number one seed as defending champion. I'd be surprised if anybody in the current top ten wasn't there. But below that, nothing can be taken for granted. And that uh, all shakes it up and makes it more interesting. I think it's, it's one of those situations where for an observer as I am now and as you are Clive no longer playing the game it's great but as a player <laughs> if you're in the 16 you don't particularly like it oh wow that 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 uh, went completely wrong hit the wrong red yeah, he's been lucky. I thought maybe the red was onto the right corner, but clearly not. So he's been lucky. Time out. Taking a time out on what's going to be a safety shot, you feel. I can't see a pot on. Well, after the timeout, he probably would have hoped to have played a better safety than that, missing a bolt colour on the way back. Now that 
was nice. One. They took a risk and it's uh, absolutely fine. It's actually a good chance now. Six. Reds are a little bit cluttered, but a lot of them are on. Seven. Still preferring blue to pink, because uh, if the pink had gone back on its spot, it was still hemming things in a bit. I spoke with uh, Mark's manager, Mukesh Palmer, oh. just before the start of play. He was a good player himself, actually, saying that Mark's having one of those spells where everyone he plays is playing brilliantly. And I seem to remember Barry Hawkins bidding him in the World Open. He played a really superb match there. And you get that from time to time. 13. All of a sudden you just run into people that are at the top of their game. It can be quite frustrating when it happens. Yes, I saw that match. 3-2 to Hawkins and they both played very, very well. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-six. Well, he could play on the black, but I'm not sure he would like to because it's a little bit close to the cushion and the reds all around it make it a little complicated. He's got the option of screwing up for the blue if he wants to. He didn't play that very well, he almost missed it. Anyway, with the brown away from its spot, he should be able to go up and down for the next red. Just look to see whether the two reds near the black spot are a plant. Yeah, there could be a plant. Two reds in the, the right corner as well that he's now looked at. So, well, that is on. 32. Just got to, if it is absolutely dead straight best way to play this would be just to imagine you're potting the first red directly and then it should hit the second one flush Thirty three. That's the beauty of these uh, ultra-fast cloths. You can force 38 down off a straightish angle. In fact, uh, he forced further than intended, but it's worked out in its favour. Uh, good point. I mean, he didn't play on that red at all. He played on the one near the black spot, but he found himself on it, and that's really helped matters. This is where Mark is very good. He hasn't played at his best tonight. There was a prolonged bout of safety at the start of this frame, but he's quite able to tough it out and then take his chance when it comes. It's one of his strengths. 44. Forty-five. Well, certainly less congested now, so have no worry with the black closing in on winning the frame in one visit 
52. Fifty-three. Oh, that was a lovely shot. Oh, that's exactly how he played that. Had a real plan there, just to nudge that red fifty-eight towards the pocket like that. At the pace he played it. 59. Which makes this black frame ball. Sixty-six. Sixty-seven. Well, he probably thinks he's won the frame, and this shot might enable him to make a century because he's going into the four reds from this pink. Develop them if possible. Unlucky. He has got the frame in the bag, but he'd like to make a century as well. Seventy-four. And, uh, having contrived that delicate plant, that possibility is still in the air. And the break came from just about nothing. It was a, an excellent opening long red in uh, the end of a long bout of safety, which is never easy to score. 80 You've got no real rhythm about you. Developed a second red into a better position as he potted the first one. He doesn't have to take the red long cushion if he doesn't want to. The other one's in the middle of the table. Ninety. Ninety-six. So it's this black for a £1,000 bonus. And what a great century this has been. 104. Excellent long red to start. Several precise cannons to keep the break going, the break ends on 104 and leaves Mark Selby with a 2-1 lead. So a triple header this evening and in the last match we've just seen uh, Mark Selby clear no, he didn't clear the table, but he made uh, 104 to take uh, a 2-1 lead over Neil Robertson. Okay. Thank you, frame four. Neil Robertson to break.
standard safety into the side of the bunch which appeared to come Foul and a miss. much Robertson more squarely off the cushion than he was expecting <coughs> so I'll be needing one of the remaining three frames to get uh, at least a draw Be a bit out, He's got to be a bit careful because if he plays the same shot again, then it'll be a warning from referee Paul Collier because he can actually see a red and it'll be three strikes, so to speak, and you lose a frame. So he wants to make contact here or he's got to play a different shot. Well, that's better. man working the bleeper has earned his money this evening. One. Didn't put him off, although of course he didn't knew nothing about that. He's actually on the green with an angle as well, it would seem. So that might prove to be a pretty costly fluke. Neil Robertson. It's all part of the game, Four. unfortunately. And it goes against you. And he's almost one shot away from having a great chance off that. And he was in all kinds of trouble, really. And that was quite Five. tight. As, but just about as much of the red that he could see there was that. And it went in the side of the pocket for that reason. Twenty. Twenty-one. <coughs> it's funny because it doesn't feel like it's been a very good match, but they're not missing too many 26. now, these two. Neil Robertson with a 69 break in frame two, which was a good one. Then that century, the last frame from Mark. That one struggled in also, but he's still going and going strong. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. Well, things are getting just slightly more difficult now. Those five reds look as if they're in each other's way a bit. In the middle of the table below the pink. So you might just play the little nudge onto one of them. <laughs> oh, 
needs a bit of good fortune, which he hasn't really got. There may be a red, the one that's just above the black. That might cut into the right corner, but it's not nice. Also, that one might pot into the middle. And uh, the latter shot is the one he's going to try. This is uh, going to take good queuing, this. And I think he thought it was in. Mark Salvi, 38. Yes, his cannon into the pink and reds didn't work out uh, quite as he'd hoped. He expected to have something easier than that. One. Six. Seven. Well, Robertson's all right, I would say, for at least three more reds. Fourteen. But then it, it's going to be... Uh, more difficult to start scoring 15. from the others. Thank you, lads. Can you stop the clock, please? Clock stopped. Mild disturbance in audience. Tended to be straighter 22. on this. Twenty-three. Yeah, played it quite well, actually. Got the nice angle hit to get up onto the red next to the pink. But as you say, Clive, this is where things get a little bit more tricky now. Not impossible. Maybe one good cannon 30. might open everything up. Thirty-one. And a bit further than he would have liked. He might have a shot here. Screw the blue in into those two reds to the right of the black. It's not a natural, but he could make it. That's what he's tried. Mm, didn't quite work out. 36. <coughs> well, this is pretty ambitious down here along the cushion rail. Played it with safety in mind. Leah Robertson, 36. So Robertson replies with 36 to Selby's 38. Both players losing position in turn at the end of those breaks. Time out. Yeah, I'm not surprised. This one uh, needs thinking about. Yeah, I mean, the two reds that are down the table here, along the bottom cushion, are quite difficult to play thin off. One, because it's awkward queuing with the green there, but when the ball is so close to a cushion, it's hard to get an edge. 
get the cue ball back. He could drop into the two reds on the right side cushion, but it's not the most adventurous of shots. And he's playing one of them. One of the reds got to get a thin contact here. That was the problem, you see, when the the object ball is so close to a cushion, catch it too thick and it just flies up the table like that. There were alternatives, but uh, none of them very attractive. May be able to develop the two reds here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he'll try. Got to give this one a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a thump. Mm, not very good contact with them. Played much, much more of the red than that than he got. Just the edgy hit in the end. Eight. Mark Selby, eight. Well, the cue ball coming off the jaw of the middle pocket has increased the difficulty of Selby's reply. He's a bit unlucky there, isn't he? I don't think he played the pot, but he didn't expect the red to stay so close to the pocket. And it's quite straight, this. Got to get the cue ball up the table. Uh, he did well to get there, but One. this will be an even better shot to get some sort of a cannon on the two reds or to land in behind them. It's going to go all around the table. Avoiding all the ball colours. Eight. You could probably play that shot a hundred times again or a thousand times again and you'd never hit the brown and cover the two reds with it. Looks like he went for the pot, but he wasn't overly close to it. Neil Robertson, eight. And it's his turn to be a little unfortunate. These are the frames that tend to add up at the end of a match, the ones that you feel that you could win that you don't. And what's well. it going to be here, I wonder? Can he play to develop the red? It's hard to see how that's going to be possible but either way he could lay a snooker he's having a go at developing this but that was always going to be the problem you see it's hard to see okay there was going to be the cannon but just to push the red into open play with Eight. the other two colours there was, was hard to see working Well, he's got to put distance between cue ball and red with this escape. Time out. Selby's second time out of the five that he's allowed. Yeah, no guarantees that he can keep this safe either. He's got to hit and hope for the best. <coughs> Mark Selby, eight. Around a half chance, I guess, for Neil, should he take it on. Not as easy as it probably looks on the screen. It's one of those that got to judge perfectly if he plays it at all. Which he did not. Concentrated on 
whacking the red round off the three cushions and getting the cue ball into the bought cushion. Very difficult to have a sufficiently delicate touch to be sure of leaving the snooker at that range, which was his intention. So the pink blocks the pocket. Hurry up bleeper comes into play again. I see very many of those time penalties do. I think Sullivan of all players has actually played a few in the past. If I remember rightly, he played one tactically was it, it's five five points for a time uh, a, a time penalty a time foul and uh, he did it in a very calculating way I forget the time exact out. context but meanwhile there's another well, time out Well, I guess it was worth a try. The only pocket he felt that he could push the red towards was the one with the pink covering it, so it was well worth it. Neil could lay a snooker. Cue ball in behind the black, perhaps, up and around the table. Might be his idea. Well, it looks like he might have a snooker, but it'll be pretty regulation off the bottom cushion to hit and if Selby can get right in behind it he may lay a snooker back well this is a chance well the kind that when Neil's at his best he gobbles up these chances long red like this Uh, that was a wide. It really was an awfully long way away. With no real worry about position with the pink over the pocket either. see it this time there you see that snooker now with the red in the middle of the table it's not only hard to hit but hard to leave safe well it looks like he's playing around two cushions with lots of right hand side don't know if there's enough of the red to pot, there isn't, uh, seeing that, that was, was a good shot to hit it, but he was pretty lucky where it finished. He's playing a swerve. But, uh, 
And both players have got away with a couple here. Things kind of ground to a halt a little bit. Well, I didn't mean to cannon the blue. This safety jewel not bound to decide the frame because uh, the brown in the position that it's in requires uh, some precision to get on. Twenty-two minutes this frame which is uh, on the long side for a Premier League frame. Problem now will be all the safety shots will be to push the red over the pink. This is the longest frame of the evening, and it may have a while to run yet. chance for Mark definitely take this on tried to get him behind the green of course now well, he's got so close to it that he's left it on what would have been a shot to nothing he thought it was in once again Pretty violent rattle in the jaws, that one. He's never knocked the pink in, surely. But he could have finished one. In, the, in the only place on the table where he can't pot it. Well, apart from being behind the colour, that is the only place. I mean, can you possibly believe that he's finished there? Well, he's looking, he tell you what, he's having pink a one. think about playing the pink here, you know, off the cushion to pot it. This would be a good shot. <laughs> Full credit, he played it boldly. If he could hit it a little thicker, it would have been heading towards the yellow, but it was a brave old shot. Seven. And now he's looking at... Uh, oh. Some exotic kind of positional shot from yellow to the, the green via the blue, which has gone wrong. Neil Robertson, seven.
Well, that was a pretty poor shot for a player of his standard, getting the double kiss. but couldn't get on the green. Two. Mark Selby, two. Well, he's, he's just about got the snooker. In fact, he's got a full ball snooker, so... Going to be another escape act here for Neil, which he's managed so far a couple of times from snookers. I think he's covered the potting angle, but I'm not absolutely sure, not being in line. A really good shot, Clive. Because like you, I thought it might have been just a bit too thin to pot all he could see. And he controlled it beautifully. Seven. He was pretty straight on the brown, so he couldn't really get on the blue. Eight in front. If he could pot the blue, it'd be 13 in front with 13 on. But for the moment, Mark Salby seven. He's wise to settle for safety. <laughs> Try to get more squarely in behind. That blue, as uh, the duration of this frame reaches 29 minutes. Well, it never went in cleanly, Five. but it doesn't matter. He played it very, very well, and uh, it's one in the frame. Hard fought frame, Clive. This one. Very. Eleven on the frame. Lots Mark of Selby. tactical play, but Mark Selby has secured it on the pink to lead by three frames to one. Mark Selby leads Neil Robertson by three frames to one, so he's sure of at least one point for a draw. But of course, he'll be pushing for two okay. for a win. Thank you, frame five. Mark Selby to break. Nice pot that, Why? and he played it because he fancied potting it, not to go too far up the table past bulk. So as a consequence, he's on a, a colour nicely here. He'd like to get on the red just below the black if possible, because that's uh, the one that will clear the black into both corner pockets. Pretty well struck that. Three. Eleven. 
Wow. Well, some angle on this, which is what he needs. This is going to be tough to open these reds. They're very tightly knitted here. Beautiful effort. He deserves to be on something. The reds were scattering all over the place. 19. Time out. Asked for a timeout, but I think there's something on. I think the timeout is for uh, advanced planning or possibly weighing up uh, a choice between two possibilities. It's only his uh, third timeout of the five he's permitted. Yeah, it was a terrific shot to break them. I think you're right. I think he just needs to have a look and. His one key shot could really put him in a great position already in this frame. So I think it's worth a look, this one. Just awkward queuing on this red, it's the only worry. Well, nicely done. 20. Well, he's made this happen very comfortably. Don't forget, he started with a, a long half ball red, and within a few shots, he's got this. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. There's certainly the possibility here of winning the frame in a single visit. Mm, that's not much of a shot. He's got one to the left corner but it's not easy and it's certainly 35 from the position he was in not what he was looking for Touching but he ball. almost certainly will take it on to keep the break alive 36 Time out. Got one left now, now. So that's his fourth of the five uh, that he can use. Yeah, he's got just one left in the rest of this match, a frame and a half. And uh, he's used two in the frame, as you can see. Like, always better to have one or two left for some kind of an emergency. But I think he, he said before the match started that maybe he'd played it a little bit wrongly in his two previous appearances in the league. Two seasons where he hardly won a match. Felt 42. like he was a bit like a headless chicken running around, he said. So, composing himself with the big shots is, is what he's doing. Fifty. Fifty-one. But not above the blue. Now it looks like he's going to try and go all around the table here with force. He's got the power to do it, but... He probably could have <laughs> just about got there by just rolling it in, to be honest. 56. Fifty-seven. Yeah, that's a better shot than it looks with the extension on his cue, just to drag it in. Yes, and had to use a very long bridge. The longer the bridge, the more difficult it is to keep the queue on a straight line. 64. Now on that you can see just a red colour needed to win this frame. Which he's done in, in pretty 65. rapid time, I have to say. It's been a, a good break, this. 
from virtually nothing when he first came to the table. Seventy-two. Seventy-three. Well, he, he showed why he's world number one here in this break because, as I say, it came from virtually nothing. And he's taken them pretty fluently. It's not been all control. He didn't run out of position once or twice, but he's got the temperament to overcome that. 78 on the frame, Neil Robertson. The Red Robertson of the century, but uh, with that break of 78, Neil Robertson reduces his arrears to 3-2. One more frame to come after the break. Two results are possible. A 4-2 win for Selby or a 3-all draw. The last frame of the evening... Starts now. Neil Robertson to break. Foul. Well, dreadful break Foul off shot from four. the world champion. Caught the end red very thin. Cuba came back the wrong side of the blue. Well, he checked to see if anything was a plant, which it wasn't. But he played a pretty attacking shot there in safety. Timeout. Well, that's his, uh, that's his final timeout, I, I believe, in the whole match which could be a factor there it, he's used them all and if he's in a bit of trouble next time he's had it and and even that that doesn't sound like much of a factor it could be needs to win this frame to force a draw Well now, this red is potable, albeit quite straight. Well, that's a pretty decent shot, really. He had to concentrate on the pot. He might have known that the cue ball was going to kind of wriggle in the jaws and come away. Good time to play that gentle loosening cannon because 16. He was going to be on this red no matter what. 17.
Well, he's found a way of getting through the reds, but I'm not sure he played it just like that. 24. Twenty-five. Well, it could be that he plays another little nudge onto the reds here. Possibly the red to the left of the three in a little triangle there. He might just play a little gentle cannon on that one. Just to develop one or two and hold the cue ball as well. Don't think he used too much force. Well, he did play exactly that red. That was a beautiful shot. Keeps everything going. Just a little gentle cannon. Thirty-three. He's given the bunch a couple of uh, productive nudges in terms of developing reds. You don't have to go. You don't have uh, always to go blasting into the pack. Forty. Forty-one. Yeah, he could have played on blacks there and gone for a very big break, but I think he's got his eye on getting the points here. Well, there's no highest break prize. No special prize 47. for the maximum, so... Just win the frame, and if you make a century for a thousand pound bonus, 48. so much the better. Again, that's a nice little nudge on those reds, and the key is not to hit the balls too hard. He, he's just stroking 55. the ball in, playing delicate cannons, keeping the reds that he cannons into in the middle of the table as well. And he's just had a quick check on the scoreboard. He knows that he's not quite there, but he is only a couple of shots away from securing this frame and getting the points for a win, which on a night when he might not have played at his best would be very satisfying. 56. <laughs> Well, not absolutely perfect. 63. Could still be some mileage in this frame. Yes, not quite over the line. Time out. Now, Salby has got a spare time out and uh, he's utilising it here. Yeah, I think he's another player that's just now thinking I just need a bit of time on the one shot here, which if he does take the red to the top right pocket, well, that should be enough, really, to win the frame. But it does offer some risk. Looks like he's playing the other red, which perhaps he can play to screw on the black off. Very well done indeed. Excellent stuff. 64. And look, this may not have been a classic, but there's been some good frames in amongst it. 64. And I couldn't really argue with the result should Mark Selby win. I think he has been the slightly the better player of the two. 72. Fewer unforced errors, certainly. He has made a century. And uh, he may be ending the match with the second century. Seventy nine. Eighty. Two more red blacks or even pinks. 87. And uh, 
Another thousand pounds will be winging its way into his bank account. 88. Yes, and he can make an extremely big break here still. It's almost gone unnoticed that he could conceivably make 145 here. As if he was to have taken the pink, because he was on reds and blacks at the start, but not priority. Just to win the frame, which uh, I think he's done in a very good style. It's, as I say, a bit of max. We had a, a slow frame, but the other frame's been alright. 94 101 the second century of the evening 102 uh, left-handed as well which I guess is a lot easier when you've won the frame and you've made a hundred break. I don't think he's an absolute natural in that way, but... Hundred and nine. Hundred and ten. So, we don't see breaks in the 140s very often, but we could see here a break of 144, which would be a pretty good way to finish, eh? Hundred and seventeen. Hundred and nineteen. Overscrewed a little from the yellow. And that's why hundred and nineteen the green wide. But that was a splendid break of hundred and nineteen. It brings the evening to an end. Mark Selby, the Masters champion, beats Neil Robertson, the world champion, by four frames to two. Yeah, great win there for Mark Selby. Just confirmation of all the results from tonight. We started off with Sean Murphy against Marco Fu. Uh, a great win there for Marco. And then Ding Junhui and Mark Williams, honours even in that one thrill. And uh, Mark Sell, we've just seen, beating the current world number one and world champion by four frames to two. That win for Mark, um, well, puts him there, really. It's all very strange. Everyone seems to be beating everyone and drawing with everyone. Still a long, long way to go. Well, that's all we've got time for. Thanks, as always, for staying with us. We'll be back in seven days' time. Until then, have a good evening.